you find yourself getting distracted, forgetting things, making mistakes at work? A quality night's sleep makes all the difference, and the right mattress is the difference between resting and just laying down. The Lisa mattress is the product of more than 30 years of experience in mattress engineering and hundreds of hours of testing. Comprised of three foam layers that provide cooling, pressure relief, body contouring, and support, over 300,000 happy Lisa sleepers agree that the Lisa mattress gives them the rest they need. Rest sounds nice. Order your Lisa mattress online at leesa.com slash bombcast with promo code bombcast and you can try it risk-free for 100 nights. The Lisa mattress ships direct to your door in a convenient box with free shipping and free returns. You can get up to $160 off the Lisa mattress or $235 off the luxury Sapira mattress and free shipping on the Lisa mattress at leesa.com slash bombcast. Be sure to enter the promo code bombcast at checkout. Remember, remember the 9th of October, that doesn't, that 2018. Doesn't that work at all. That's not even... That rhymes. You didn't even remember, it. though. Yeah. You had to ask us if it was the 9th. No, that's... Nope. I remember. Brad. Nope. I, yeah, I asked you like three minutes ago, and then I remember right up till now. Uh, that's true. And said it out loud. It works. It's a giant bombcast. I forgot what day it hey, was. Hey, thanks. And we just, just talked remember, about remember. it. Did you say thanks? I said thanks. <laughs> for what? You're, You're welcome, doing Jason. The bombcast. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for uh, manning a microphone in the studio. Where we talk about games and such on this podcast. Several things. Yeah. Globetrotting Jan Ochoa down there. Yes. I'm back. At the, at the control board. I'm back in the country. I almost didn't want to come back because Copenhagen was too nice. Yeah? How nice? Uh, you know how people build up San Francisco to be a beautiful place? Mm-hmm. And All like, the time. Yes. And, and you think like, wow, it sounds like such an amazing place. Yeah. yeah. We won't shut up about it. And you get here. <laughs> And then it's not because there's pee everywhere and mm, yeah. mm. several other things everywhere. Mm. Uh, Copenhagen is the complete opposite of that. Yeah, Copenhagen was, is like the 180. It, people so are talking you, shit you go, about you go it all the time. Going like, Oh man, this place is going to be actively on fire. <laughs> exactly. It's just like basically an open wound on the world. You're telling me you didn't see any pee in Copenhagen? No pee in Copenhagen. Not, not, even, no not even your own? No. I didn't Whoa. drink any water. That's that was smart. a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, isn't Denmark legit rated like the happiest happiest country in the, in the world? Yes. I think I have, have like highest quality of life. My face hurt from smiling so much Man. while I was there. That it's sounds, weird. Is it just infectious? Good. Like everybody else was smiling? No. Okay. They, it was it was just Dan and I. I think oh, everyone else okay. is just used to how happy and great things are. Yeah. We're like, okay, we can live with it. So they're all like miserable. Probably. Like technically on a test, they test really high as like, yeah. oh, we're super happy. Yeah. But just day to day, they don't even notice it. <clears throat> exactly. Until Man. they leave. I bet you until they leave. And then they're like, oh crap. Oh, we should, at least it's just... not Yeah. More like uh Dan Mark, huh? Uh, how did that go? That was that was great. Yeah. Dan what, what were you guys up to? Oh, so we went to go check out check out Hitman Two, uh, IOI Interactive in yeah. Copenhagen. Mm-hmm. Those dudes are super cool, yeah. uh, and that's a super cool game. But Copenhagen, man, everyone bikes. Everyone is on bikes. That sounds all right. Yeah. And I, from what Dan and I observed, hardly anyone locks them up. Hmm. Like you know, here what? people are super anal about tying several chains yeah. around their yeah. bikes to make sure they're okay. Well, so some of those way of rip life. a tire you off. To. Exactly. Yeah. People will rip your seat off for yeah. no reason. So did you fly back with like a sweet new bike? Did you just like see one you like? And so like, mm, this one's coming back to the States with me. The San Francisco and me thought yeah. about stealing some bike seats. Of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, Slash so, some tires or something. Just for like, uh, you locked it up too tight, so I have to destroy the bike now. I don't know what it says about Dan and I, but the whole time we were there, we were thinking like, all right, there's got to be, there's got to be something shitty about Copenhagen. We're seeking it out. <laughs> Where's the seedy underbelly? And then there just there just wasn't, man. Wow. Hmm. And then we seemed dumb because we thought Danishes were from Denmark, but they're not. <laughs> did, you just, want, did anyone you didn't correct you on any, that? Did you? No. Everyone did you was, ask? Everyone was too polite to correct <laughs> us. I understand them not being from there, but 
you couldn't find a Danish just like no. at a coffee shop? No, we found several croissants. Oh, okay. Almost too many croissants. That, that sounds good, though. Yeah. yeah. What was the strangest and or best thing you ate? Uh, the strangest thing by far was this hamburger covered in what Dan and I thought was gravy. Or American gravy, at least. Because mm-hmm. that like sounds a, great. Yeah, that sounds like a, yeah. That's, that's like a, a loco time. moco, you know? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we ate it, and it was just a collective confusion of like, this This doesn't taste like American gravy. Was it vinegary? I, I don't know. Was it brown sauce? It was brown sauce. I mean, it was literally like brown HP sauce. Brown, yeah. HP sauce? Oh, okay. Like, I... I don't, I don't know. That also sounds okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it didn't have a particular strong flavor. Right. And our burger was just wet. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dan ate a lot of hot dogs while we were there. Like, he was having the time of his life. That sounds like fucking Shangri-La. Is that, is that, like, a, is that like a national delicacy, or was he just seeking out the hot dogs? We saw, like, a, an uptick of hot dog carts while mm. we were there, okay. and then a friend said, like, oh, you should, you should buy a hot dog while you're there. And then I thought, like, oh... Okay. okay. That's why they're oh, yeah. so happy. They have <laughs> You're easy right. access to hot dogs yeah, everywhere. That's man. Is there anything unusual about a Danish dog? Uh, Dan had one where it was just the French roll, and they just jammed the dog inside. Okay. Oh. And like a, like a bagel dog, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Dip, very different. Exactly. And then we call those the sleeping bags back home. <laughs> whosoever removes this dog from this bread <laughs> shall be the king of Denmark. And, and then they had asked, like, hey, do you want all this ketchup and stuff inside? And then Dan and I were looking at each other, like, how are you going are, are to put ketchup in that? And then they just slipped it on, like, the inside of the hot dog, and then it was good to go. Huh. Like, in the bun, and then they slipped it in. And, yeah. Man, that's thinking. That's how they get you. Yeah. yeah. And then I, Dan was just so happy with, I've never seen someone more content eating <laughs> a hot dog. And then he, it was his quest to head back to New York to bring this back. He's going to bring this style of hot dog back to New York. I hope it's he's gonna a thing open, over there. Like, he's, he's probably running a cart by now then. Yeah. yeah. He's probably yeah. out there on the street, like, like trying street, to his side poke, hustle. The, poke the hot dogs into the French bread. Going, ah! I mean, he's just making that kind of noise. Like, ah! And just, like, trying to jab it in. What other food would be improved if it was just jammed inside of a French roll? Uh, donuts. Mm-hmm. A smaller French roll? Yeah. Okay. Rolls. Yeah. Like the turducken of bread. Pepperoni, you jam <laughs> yeah. jam that yeah, in there. Yeah. Like, Salami, like, like pizza toppings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pizza ice cream, po- like some yeah. sort of pizza yeah. pocket. I would give it yeah. a go. Ice cream inside a French bread. Not bread. really my first choice, yeah. but ice, cr- you know. ice cream and bread. Huh? I can't say. Oh, it's, a thing. Oh, it's like those little. Mm. What are you the know, fish? You a cone. Yeah, yeah. Ice fish. cream sandwich. Yeah, yeah. 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 A literal okay. ice cream sandwich. Okay. <laughs> sure. Dutch crunch and some Neapolitan or something. I don't know. Huh. Some birthday cake. Yeah, that'd probably be bad. Yeah. It could probably be okay. Get a little runny. Just have to eat it fast. Mm. Yeah, but then the bread is like a nice, foods. soggy, sweet. It's, yeah. like a, it's like a soup it's sandwich. It's a little sweet. What's yeah. a soup sandwich? It's, what do you th- it's, a, it's a thing that does not exist. <laughs> I know what it is, but me asking that question was I wanted Brad to e- describe to me what it was and also justify its existence. In I the want world. it. <sighs> a soup sandwich should be like soup in a bread bowl, only right. you can take it and hold it. Mm-hmm. So, you can like, hold a bread bowl. Sure. I mean, yeah, you can hold a bread bowl. You know, I imagine it'd have to be a stew, not a soup. A soup is too viscous. It's going to get everywhere, and you're going to just have wet bread. Look, man, before they closed the Panera Bread in my town, which was a sad day, Hmm. I'd get any motherfucking soup in a bread bowl. Bring it on. You want chicken noodle soup in a bread bowl? And I would say, say, yeah, let's go. Oh, in a bread bowl. Yeah, Yeah, in a bread bowl, you can go. You can drink water out of a bread bowl. I think you know the sandwich would have to be sealed up all the way around. So it's almost be, like a it, hot dog bun. Yeah, exactly. It would be a, like a loaf of bread, and you would just carve out a hole down the middle of it. You bore it out. You get one of those big syringes that you use to put like garlic cloves and turkeys. Yeah, you get a turkey and baster then... and just turkey baste the soup in there yeah. and just keep going. There you go. Uh, that probably work. We're on. To I mean, you'd have here. to eat it. Turn this podcast off. I got. I, I yeah, no, no, contact right. somebody going, to, going with a truck. Goddamn Panera bread. That was the IO office. The IO office is super cool. Yeah. Uh, had a lot of random uh, statues everywhere, of course. Uh, all bald? All bald. There were some uh, ninjas that were bald. Okay. Uh, ping pong were they, table. Were they tiny ninjas? Yes. Okay. There were some tiny ninjas. ninjas. And tiny hitmen, too. Oh. Hitman? Hitmen. Did, yeah. Hitmen. I mean, they're, they're the New York, New Jersey hitmen. Oh, you're right. I mean, there's like 47 of them, right? I, I Maybe guess more. So, yeah. well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. 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 46, were Jason. Did you meet him? Yes. He is the nicest gentleman in the world. Helmut? Yes. Well, I, mm, the guy. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, 
he also is bald. Mm. Uh, he just does that to get in character. Yeah. He's a yeah. method actor. Yeah. I couldn't place where his accent was from, and I didn't know if he was just messing with Dan and I the whole time. Um, but then he did watch uh, Dan and I play some Hitman, and he was laughing the whole time about how <laughs> terrible we both were. Okay. Um, he was like, wow, I can't believe you made me do that. Huh. All right. I would never, but okay. It tends to happen with Dan at the controls. Uh, yeah. so what, what, what's up with that game? What can you tell us? That game. That game. There we go. Ah. Uh, is Hitman. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly like the first one, okay. which is great. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Agent 47 is much more talkative. And, okay. and in a positive way, like in a quippy way, not not so much a quippy like, way, where it's like cracking wise. No, he's not like Spider Man, Peter Parker. Uh, no, he's just cracking like, jokes. Is, is he like hitting people with like throwing Kansas fire extinguishers, yeah. going suck it? Like, is it was he like what's he? It's it's more. I didn't start the fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh it's more contextual based on the outfit he's assuming. Uh, so I had t I had dressed up as a shaman, as you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a couple of people in the village I was passing by saying like, oh, hey, hi, priest. What's up? How's it going? Thanks for that blessing. And then Agent 47 just replied, you're welcome. I hope your mom is doing well. <laughs> and, and just various things like that. So I'd assume if he were to go back and be the drummer that he was in the first game, uh, he'd say some line about, I love slapping the drums and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Exactly what as, he would As say. do we all. Yeah. Be great if there was like if you had to like find books around like you know easy guide to drummer and you know, like you read it and you know, now I know the lingo. He's just and, sitting in a corner and, watching a YouTube video called yeah. Drumming One Hundred and One. And once you know the lingo, anyone else who is a drummer, you can maybe get past them. Otherwise, they're gonna be like, "I love to nice slap the hi hats." Uh, yeah, bro. you're you're my favorite tub slammer. That's that's cool because some of my favorite deadpan humor in the first game was was when he tries like he sort of impersonates whoever he's dressed as but yes. makes yeah. zero effort <laughs> yes. whatsoever. It's, it's like you don't sound just... anything like that person and they don't even notice. The the level I played through was in Colombia and then most of the other NPCs had accents and just a Agent 47 just not even trying yep. to <laughs> put one on which Great. I guess is good because it would, would I mean that's how might he, be that's, offensive. That's just how good he is. Yeah. Yeah. That they can't even just tell. It. Yeah. 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 What well, kind of that, new areas are we talking about? Yeah, I was going to ask about Columbia. Is that that's not the racetrack from E3? Is no, it? No, no, that is Miami. Okay. Uh, Dan played through that, and there's a multitude of hilarious costumes to assume. But Columbia is pretty neat. Uh, your your targets are related to drug cartels. Uh, it's a pretty big map. You actually get to go into uh, the jungle and everything, and there may be some stuff. Like a aquatic mammal to hmm. use as a disguise. Uh, 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 okay. Huh. Yes. Huh. I don't know if that's actually native to Colombia. Now that I think about yeah. it. What? Huh. All right. You could take over a hippo. What? Oh. Yes. You <laughs> can dress thinking, up as a hippo. What? Whale or something. Yeah. Um, I mean, the hippo is the most deadly mammal in Africa, so it makes sense. That hippo hasn't met Agent Forty Seven. <laughs> <laughs> True. Agent Forty Seven is just as hungry. Yeah. Were those the, the only two maps you guys saw? Yes, okay. those were the only two maps. Uh, Columbia seems pretty nice because there's a little villa, there's a little village you get to run around in, uh, a drug cartel mansion along with the jungle. So it's, it's very varied yeah. environments in the, the one map. Um, yeah, they do a good job of packing a lot of variety into those yeah, spaces. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if it was uh, just because of the demo build we were playing, but a lot of the opportunities or murder... or. Uh, Opportunities to yeah, opportunities, like assassination, yeah. assassination, like yeah. yeah. Uh, seemed a little bit more easier to find. Okay. Like I'd just be running around a level, just trying to get a feel mm. for it, oh, wow. and then they'd be more actively popping up. Huh. Um, I don't know if I would just ran around the right areas, but yeah, it was cool. Yeah, that's. I think they kind of got. They were going in that direction with the the first one because, mm -hmm. like, they want you to see the cool, flashy stuff, right? And then yes. they, they built the challenge in with higher level, like combo type assassinations and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, pretty excited. Uh, they they didn't when we talked to them. They we we had mentioned it's like, hey, it's so great that you guys like lean in on the like absurd nature of how players can get into it. Uh, but they were saying like, yeah, we frame it in such a serious way, but it's it's pretty much just you knuckleheads that make it all weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I sure. Uh, but I don't know. I feel like they there's... set the stage for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. It, it's it's great to see that they're not like trying to hide away from it. Yeah. Dan and I found a printout in the office that said super cocaine 
So, yeah, like, I don't know, man. They may say they take it seriously, but there is something very inherently absurd about that game. You have, me. but like, you have to take your absurdity seriously. Oh, I know. That's why, yes. that's why you it have works. to be deadly serious about super cocaine <laughs> and helmet Kruger. And helmet Kruger <laughs> like that, to that, make that work. That, that, yeah, know? it works because the character never acknowledges any of it. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's cool. Did you get any sense of if there's any story continuity with the first one? Like, I barely remember what was happening in that thing, but. Uh, we didn't get to play through the intro uh at all and they had hinted that well they let us look at the levels not allowed to say what said levels are but yeah. uh i i believe there is yeah, yeah. okay yeah because like <sighs> they did the first you can play through the first yeah that's not cool they'll yeah, carry over able to import that right in. okay. right yeah, yeah. so i oh, assume cool. there's some type of carryover yeah i just i wonder story or... i wonder how they get you into this one because like the, they onboarded you into the reboot by like literally going through the training of agent right. 47 like before right. he was a full-on assassin so i wonder you know where they yeah if they do something where, where they where they pick up from there hmm. but uh it's agent 47 walking his child through an assassination okay, yeah. mm. okay. <laughs> it's a flash okay. forward yeah. right. and then his yeah. child dies yeah god that game's like what a month away Something wow, yeah, it's not too far off. Like November, yeah. yeah they they yeah. got to be wrapping it up. I wonder, yeah. So there's uh, footage of, uh, that's the Columbia stuff is up on the site now, right? Uh, Miami. Miami's up on the yes. site. Okay. I do have a playthrough of Columbia if you guys want to peep it out. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the travel. Y'all running around yeah. uh, Columbia, or uh, around Columbia, <laughs> running around Copenhagen Columbia is, yep. is up on the site. Yes. And then more to come? More to come. More yes. to come. Yes. More to come. Yeah. Some uh, neat stuff. Cool. Uh, Copenhagen was great. Dope. Hitman 2's Hitman, but still dope. Cool. Electric Boogaloo. That sounds like mm. good. Yeah. And the video of you guys on Super Cocaine. Oh, yeah. well, that's that's, that's for, for like premium, collection. premium gotcha. members. Yep. Yep. It's, it's a new tier. It's the platinum members. Yeah, to find us, give us your challenge coin, and then we give you the password. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ben. Yo. Do you like to party? <laughs> love to party oh yeah if there's anything people know about me like, i just give up the vibe like i walk this into guy. a room and they're like oh. whoa you're, you are the you're the party dude yeah. of the crew <laughs> yeah actually i guess uh <laughs> i partied a little bit i played i played a little bit of mario party oh um what uh la- to <laughs> which <laughs> so just just mario party is not just oh anything? sorry mario party super or Super Mario Party. Isn't it Mario Party Super? I don't no, know. It's Super, Super Mario Party. Okay. What? Uh, oh, I, I like that less. <laughs> I, I like Mario Party Super more because it's just like, you know, Super Mario Party sounds like a Super Nintendo game. And this is not that. Mm. I can confirm yeah. that Mario Party Super okay. Mario is not, 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 not a Super Nintendo, 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 Nintendo game. game. Right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I played, right, not I, interested I played a good like two or three hours a couple weekends ago. Why? Um, why? Yeah, why? Well, I mean, there was like a literal reason of I was, I was helping somebody review it, but um, also Ugh. I I don't mind Mario Party. Why? And here's the thing: I played them all by myself. Wait, what? what? Why? It, what? <laughs> it's not a party. I, I would rent them and just play against. The, I don't know. I was a fucking bored kid with only Nintendo consoles. What else am I gonna do to pass the time other than eventually you're at the blockbuster and you've played everything that's good and you're like, well, I'll rent Mario Party and just rent the bouncer again for like the. 20th time <laughs> i'd rather play mario party than the bouncer sorry if that's a hot take or a bold statement but i disagree <laughs> all right and I, I haven't played the bouncer since <laughs> it was new but i i'm in my head Would you i'm rather thinking the quiet man or mario party quiet man <laughs> definitely <laughs> quiet man. no we'll get to that yeah. don't worry it's a nice somber party um yeah. how, many, how many players are we talking four, how, many, how many turns t- uh t- f- 15 and then 10. Okay. They don't okay. even have so it was like 10 15 20 turns mm. i think was oh, that's max. It? oh that's right didn't they uh. they Drop the 50 turn option. Fucking don't look at me, man. I don't know. <laughs> you played all of them. Did I? Yeah, <laughs> sure. You've played more Mario, Mario parties than I have. And I've done a lot of work uh, <laughs> on my own time to try to move past <laughs> that. And, uh, you know, letting go it's a of the specifics uh, has really been helpful to me. And, you know, it's... It's, it's like a fine Mario Party. As far as Mario Parties go, it's one of the better ones. So would you say it's better or worse than whatever that Mario Party thing you brought to UPF with the guns? Oh. And the, <laughs> and the pirates? It's the pirates. That thing was uh, weird and kind of... Yeah. Cool. The mini games in that I thought were okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, Pummel Party. Pummel Party. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's a little... It, it's definitely more polished. Sure. It's got, yeah. you know, the Nintendo seal of approval. Ooh. So, you know, it's going to be... You know it's going to be quality. I actually think, didn't they get rid of that? 
Yeah, I think they, yeah, they more or less. Um, well, they brought it back for Mario Party. They brought it back for Mario Party. So there's a few key differences of this and other games. One is that you can play as Monty Mole. Um, so it's incredible on that front. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. cute. He's very cute. And he like, he gets all angry and he's happy cute. and God, I love Monty Mole. Is he always like coming out of the ground or a pipe or something? He's often like peeking up behind okay. corners and stuff. Okay. Just kind of like, you can tell he doesn't like the spotlight. He's, he's maybe like a little shifty. But yeah, yeah. He wears, he wears sunglasses. And right? he's blind. Ish. Man. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you got to think about that. How is he even playing these mini games? Uh, it says a lot about you know the skill required to play the mini games. In uh, fact, in some... <laughs> I uh, maybe he's like a daredevil level. So I what do I I don't know. Yeah, his other senses are heightened. Yeah, I can't really. His taste. He, he can taste the most delicate herbs. It, anyways, is there a chef mini game? <laughs> yes, actually. Do you been... taste the most de- delectable herbs? <laughs> Let me back up. It's Mario Party. Okay. The board game stuff is mostly the same. Okay. Uh, the map seems smaller. Okay. Coin, co- stars are 10 okay. coins now, and coins are like a lot less common because there's more item spaces and stuff. It's a little more interactive. What were they before? 20. Okay. Uh, yeah. It was kind of the standard. And so um, the games were, were I don't know, I, I felt like they were a comparable time of other Mario Party games because there's more stuff to do on the board game. There's more items. There's more interactions. There's more like... You are using this item on another player. It felt a little less random, mm. like a little less random. Mm. It, it wasn't completely bullshit. So like ninety eight percent random. Yeah, instead of ninety nine. Yeah, great. Uh, I will say though, I had a l- pretty good time with the mini games. Um, were you guys game... docked? Mm, or... Yes. Okay. You so you have to play docked because each player plays with one Joy Con. Okay. I don't know if there's. I, I believe they said straight out that they weren't supporting the pro and controller. Yeah. 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 Um, or any Joy-Con two, two Joy-Cons, shenanigans. Right? Or Don't, two Joy-Cons. You have to just play with one? Because, yeah. It, it, it ended up making a lot of sense once the games started. So a lot of them were motion-based. Okay, sure. Um, there was one where you had like a cube of meat in a pan and you had to sear all the sides of it by kind of virtually flipping the meat around. That actually sounds kind of And cool. the handling on it was pretty good. It was better than like the this, Wii mini This seems game. like potentially like another like game that would maybe show that HD rumble stuff the totally. way 1-2-Switch did. It, it straight up had a game where it was like, okay, here's like a, a thwomp. Um, the big stone was guy. Was that the with name the of the, the mini game? Here's, here's a thwomp. Here's a swamp. Here's that big guy with a bandage on his back that's like a big rock. And uh, here's uh, a bomb on. And they're each going to do a different thing and they do a different rumble. And then the hmm. curtain closes and you feel the different rumbles and you have to choose like who, what the order of the guy was. And it's okay. a very simple game, but it was cool because it was all just about like holding the Joy Con, feeling mm. the different kinds of rumbles. Yeah, that's, that's kind of neat. Um, I will say, the, what was that called? Swamp, 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 or bomb? Swamp, stomp, stomp. Uh, swamp the yard. <laughs> God, God. Mm. Drain the swamp. Oh, Jesus Christ! And the best part about boil. That's Mario why the bandage Marty on the back uh, was of the the river Toad's River Rumble. I don't know if it was called that, but there's this. It's kind of a co-op <laughs> mode. Uh, where you're going down. I love Toad's River Rumble. It's my favorite. <laughs> you're going down a river, and it's got like branching paths, and you're all rowing. You all have a Joy-Con, and you're it's like two on each side. Okay. And so you know that people are you're how hard you're rowing. One is, boat, four players is depending on like if you're turning or, left or right. Or four boats. What do we, you know? One boat. One boat. Four players. Okay. Everyone's in control of the boat. Um, you know, if the people on the left paddle more, it's gonna go to the. Okay. left yeah. or go to the right etc and so you're trying to like dodge obstacles and hit balloons and the balloons have mini co-op mini games that you play together and adds more time and it's kind of like that um arcade game where you're pumping the thing to try and go down a course and if your time runs out it oh, runs out yeah, you know that yeah yeah i don't remember what it's called but so yes. it's kind of like that where you're trying to get to the end on on time basically mm-hmm. and, and you're beating mini games to get more time and that was actually pretty fun i thought the last time they tried to do something co-op was mario party like nine or eight it was the one where you're all in the car together let me that check my chart bad. yeah that was awful yeah um, yes, the my chart says yes. It that was part, awful. That particular Mario Party was awful. It's uh, my chart is. It just says the word awful. <laughs> it says if parentheses Mario yeah. Party then parentheses awful. awful. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know it 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 was all right. <laughs> it was 
okay. nothing, nothing amazing. They don't. They aren't like trying to push the Mario Party genre hugely ahead. We didn't get to try the. Uh, I forget the name of the mode, but the one with multiple. Yeah, switches that's what I was going to ask about. Put them together. Do it, you know if? Do, I, I assume you need multiple copies of the game for that. I think that is the case. It can't. It can't mm. like download the mini game to another Switch. No. Or something. Um, mm. it, at the time, it was a little buggy. I don't know if they. It was pre-release. They may have fixed that. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, like as far as Mario, the 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 biggest bummer I think was there was four, there was only four stages of just straight up Mario Party, mm. which I feel like most games had. I don't know, like six or seven, yeah. Had yeah. like a decent Give variety. Was there a spooky one? No, oh. there was like a bomb one, and a beach one, a jungle one, and a, maybe a Bowser. One. We didn't have the fourth one unlocked. Okay, that, and that was the other bummer is like you have mm. to play all the all the different types of modes just to unlock different things in other modes. So like if you don't enjoy the river mode, it's a bummer. You're going to have to play it anyway to unlock all the boards. Uh, I don't know the specifics really? of how they're oh. interlocked, but certain things unlock certain things in other yeah, yeah. game types. Um, Makes sense. But, you know, I, I haven't played the full game since release. I am not opposed to Mario Party so I, but I'm not going to go out of my way to. You'd party again. Get this one. I'd party again if someone brought a switch to a party and I had literally nothing better to do. You're not going to seek it out, but if someone shows up and offers you a little bit for free, yeah, I don't do at, it at a party at home yeah, by myself. No, no anymore. you're not. Like, you don't keep I'm anything college, at home. You know? Yeah, I, right. I, uh, everyone goes. But to hey, it. if you're out, yeah. And uh, outside of that, I haven't been really playing much new, many new games. Um, I did sit down though. It's it's going to be that time of a year where we start to need to wrap up some loose ends and finish mm -hmm. those games yes. that we might not have otherwise. It's definitely getting there. Considered to finish, so I uh, ended up beating the messenger, and cool. uh, I know I had I was raving about that game for a while, um, specifically around the kind of the middle portion of the game where it becomes something that is not inherently obvious, and that got me enough to like decide to finish the game and I, I honestly am a little disappointed with how it ends. I think it's a little weak hmm. um, the last third of the game so I'm not going to get into any you know, like like narratively spoilers. or like just like structurally? Both. Huh. Um, so I think narratively and, and story wise that game has a really strong first half. You're kind of you know there's something wrong. You've got the shopkeeper who's like telling you these stories that kind of you have morals and lessons attached to them and you're kind of you know there's like something else going on and you hit that halfway point you kind of meet more characters start to learn more about the universe and then right before the end once you unlock like your second main objective you know once you do basically what you're spending the whole game doing you get to this huge exposition dump and it just lasted for like i don't know 10 minutes doesn't sound like a long time but on an action platformer where you're getting all your story through like little conversations here and yeah, there, yeah. it's just like screen after screen after screen. And it's fine. Like the story they're telling, it's fine. But it kind of came out of nowhere. It was just like, mm. it was like them trying to over justify things. And it, it, it felt mm. like, um, and then there's like a lot of backtracking around it. You, you have to kind of, the world is circular, like all areas flow into other areas. So, so you're often kind of just like, to get from one point to another, you may have to cross through this really long stretch for like, I don't know, I, I played through one part of that game maybe four times because there's no fast travel point. Like, it's right in between two fast travel points, so I had to, you know, just oh, yeah. like, uh -huh. go through it. And it was a little bit of a bummer. And uh, the last boss, kind of underwhelming, like, sets up a really cool idea, and then it, I felt like it was just over in an instant. It, it, it was kind of a bummer. I still think that the game overall is, is really strong. I think that it's worth checking out even if you know what like, the big twists are or whatever. I think that it's a highly competent action platformer. It's like, it feels tight. The movement is great. By the end, the, the way the whole like Cloud Strife double jump thing works where if you, get, if you hit something mid-jump, you get your jump back. Mm -hmm. By the end, you're just like flying through these long stretches, not touching the ground. It feels great. It feels like you feel super powerful and in control. But I feel like it just kind of bungles it a little bit towards the end. I will say there was one part in particular that kind of made me choke up. It was, it was, a, it was really sweet. It was the last story that the shopkeeper tells you about a boy in the well. Um, if you've played through, you kind of 
know what it is. I think there's a lot of little moments like that that overall, I, I think the narrative structure is pretty strong and and it's like fourth wall breaking a little bit here and there. And in, in yeah, that good stuff way. is like it. That, so I started playing it as well, and I haven't, I haven't gotten to the the twist yet or the the, the midpoint. I guess not really a twist. Uh, and yeah, like some of it, like it started out cutesy in a way that I was on board with, but I feel like even I'm I'm already going like okay, yeah, yeah, yeah it's it feels like they like just cross the line and then back up a little. They like play around the line of right. what is too much or too little yeah. fourth wall stuff a little bit. Um, but I, 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 uh, I applaud them for going for it. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the messenger. I, I, like I said, still think it's a great game. Still think it's worth checking out, but maybe a little less strong finish than I had hoped for. All right. Jason. Yo. Hey. I happen to know that you played a fighting game. I'm a fighter. Last week. <laughs> what? I'm a fighter. This may shock people. I'm a fighter. It's may come as a surprise. Yeah, you, long you, time you listeners. High. I got to uh, go to a, an event uh, and play some uh, GOA six. Yeah, yeah. I have a, the new I, dead or alive. The new dead or alive. Yeah, the uh, the the new uh, censored version of. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're reeling back. GOA has a you know kind of a reputation mm -hmm. for having some jiggle physics. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm you know here to report that the physics are still there, but you know the. The ladies covered up a little bit more. Okay, um, that's just so they can sell another three hundred dollars of DLC. Don't I mean like they're probably right. There's like, gonna be swimsuits out there. DOA ass. five has Wait, like did the fighting games do that? I thought it was yes. just the volleyball. No, games. the fighting no. games like hmm, costume packs for hundreds, fucking if a not year, thousands yeah. of dollars worth okay. of like so much and stuff. Huh. But I will say that you know they have like the destructible clothing and and stuff. You know, if your character takes too much damage, traditionally like. Oh, there goes most of my top. That was the first thing to go. Now it's like, oh, my, my midriff is gone or something. It's like the like third that. thing to go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah the, the ladies seem to have uh, you know costumes that uh, cover up a little bit more. So it's a little, it's 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 pulled back a little bit, which I, I actually just, appreciate. Was that something fine. that they were out there talking about, or just something that like? No, no, no. That's you just, this, you just that, noticed that, it looking at it. You're like, I, oh, this yeah. this feels like the, like maybe they. Rain it in. Yeah, yeah there's been some personnel changes in Team Ninja over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know that definitely was a bullet point of theirs. You know, hmm. uh, some time ago, but it, it's something that stood out yeah. to me. Huh. Um, so some of the new mechanics that were that we're gonna have in this game is a uh, super move is a, a lot like Tekken. You know, those those rage arts or whatever. So you just you can hit a button or hold a button, and uh, you'll go into like you know uh, like an armor move. You know, it'll blow through like and if somebody's attacking you. You pop your super and you blow through that first attack and you hit them with it. Hmm. Uh, but it's, it's also got auto combos as well. So you can, you know, start mashing the R1 button and it'll start doing an auto combo. After about three or four hits, it goes directly in your super. Uh, so beginner friendly. It, okay. That's very cool. So wait, are you saying that it's not possible to be knocked out of your super? Like most other fighting games? Uh, like if you're saying the super goes through a hit? Yeah, it, yeah, it should. It should. There, there's probably a way to get around it, I'm sure, of course. There might be Locking, like moves that have armor break properties exactly. or something like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, unfortunately, they had me uh, paired up with uh, this dude that uh, writes for SRK. <laughs> and he is super into the game and very, very good at it. And uh, like he was... Uh, familiar with the game enough to like man they didn't have this color at like tokyo game show <laughs> it's like what how do okay. you know this oh god you, i haven't when, i mean it's a site that specializes in fighting games. i know you you get to filter out everything else about video games and just go like All exactly right, I, yeah. need to, I need to know these costume we were, colors we were both recording footage yeah. and he's and he's like you know uh, do you have everything you need you know i'm just gonna keep playing this you know because uh, i'm not gonna play the other games i'm just just doing the fighting game yeah, yeah. stuff i'm like no no i'm, I'm good I'm Good. Uh, but yeah, sorry, so, I couldn't give you better footage. Right, <laughs> I did one. I, I picked one. <laughs> I grabbed one out of like the ten matches that we had, and he's like, "Oh, I think you found your main." But uh, <laughs> stage transitions are back. Um, oh, cool! And that's that's super cool. That's my uh, favorite so part like, about yeah the multi tiered stuff, uh, and you you see that in Tekken as well. Um, also not stage fatalities, but like, uh, like stage hazards and stuff. We, we, okay. uh, we, we were on one stage uh, that items. had a bunch of, uh, like, uh, dinosaur eggs. And if you get knocked into the dinosaur egg, like it hatches and like this pterodactyl comes out, uh, and picks what? you up and just like throws it. Like it doesn't do any damage. It's just what? ridiculous. And it's fun for the sake of being fun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but also on that stage, if you do a stage transition, you get knocked down. Um, if you get knocked into like a, uh, 
like the Jurassic Park Jeep, as it were, this big like T Rex comes out and, and chomps you. It's huh. pretty rare. not like a round ending chomp, no, though, right? Not it's a just, round okay. ending chomp. Right. Like it didn't. These didn't seem to be uh, doing any damage. Uh, they huh. just seemed to be kind of just because they, they always had the like the danger zone yes. or the, like, the electric walls electric stuff, and walls, that would always do those just, would do just a little bit of damage. Yeah, yep. and like keep you stunned and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that stuff is still prevalent for okay. sure. Uh, but other than that, you know, not a huge amount of changes, you know, other than, you know, kind of covering up a little bit, adding supers, may, maybe making a little more, you know, beginner friendly. It is still heavily focused on like that parry system, uh, which is not overly complicated, but like, you know, you really need to spend some time with this game in order to learn everybody's strings to anticipate, you know, what's coming next. So you can do the right kind of parry, you know, it's like high, medium and low and also like you know, a special one for kicks, you know, it's like, damn, there's, there's a lot going on to that game. I've always had fun with it, Yeah, but, but it's always been the, the guessing, just a the guessing game of parries as, as they've like made that game like a little more complicated over the yeah. years or, or, or like fully featured is probably the right way to say it. Uh, yeah. Like you can't just mash the, the medium parry or you can't nope. just like mash back and block over and over again and wait to catch something. I mean, you can, mm -hmm. but there's so many ways around that now. Yeah. It's not just a higher low parry. Yeah. It's yeah, I think that's a good thing. Like that's, you know, the, the game got some more depth out of that. Yeah. Uh, that probably made it a better game, mm -hmm. even if it's, I think that makes it slightly less accessible. So maybe like the, the auto combo stuff will kind of, work in its favor to kind of balance that out. seem to be just like the norm now. I guess yeah. we've gotten to a point, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's, I, I, on some level, I wish that there were better ways to get beginners into a game other than, eh, just mash it. I don't know. I've, know? I've seen it in practice work really well. Yeah. I have like, you know, friends who primarily play Melee and sometimes will be like, okay, we're going to go try playing this, you know, cross tag. And sure enough, they like start with the auto combos and it does provide a pretty good yeah. foundation of sure. just like, this is what a combo looks like. Now just like experiment instead of hitting A for the fourth time, like try B and just they yeah, kind of work backwards hit, yeah. from that. And yeah. Did Tekken 7 have auto combos? Yeah. So they, they kind added of added them later. later. Okay. Like the story mode had them from launch and they like, eventually rolled those into. Because I'm, I'm trying to think back when that became a thing. I guess Dragon Ball, I feel like, is the first time people were really talking about it well, as like, like a core component Persona, of the game. Persona 4 Persona Arena, 4 Arena, 4 Arena uh, was yeah. like the, the big, big first. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they were definitely That's the big first one that I, that I can think yeah. of. Uh, but yeah, that's probably not the first one. No. Did you guys see that ever come into Street Fighter? It seems like that's maybe a little too competition focused it's, for something like that. It, mm. uh, well, I mean, like, it, it exists in Dragon Ball. Well, which, yeah. But like, I, I think Street Fighter is changing in like having these newer characters like Falk and Ed who don't have traditional like like instead of making it uh, Dragon auto combos, Punch Mushroom. yeah, having characters that are just like ex like. Down and two buttons is, is your special move. Or, like, so you can kind of learn combos way easier than just, like, memorizing, like, light, light, core circle forward, heavy. It's just, like, light, light, down, heavy. So it's kind of making the combos easier and rolling them back a little bit and making just characters that are inherently more accessible. And then maybe you go from, like, a Falk to a Ryu and just yep. work I always felt like that that's, that was the purpose that charge characters served in the early days of Street Fighter Two. Oh, really? Was, yeah. like... Because I could not throw a fireball, right? But I could certainly throw a sonic boom. But people that are mashing, like the idea of holding back You're right. for two no, seconds, you, you definitely like is, it was still like it was, some, so it was still something you had to learn. But it was still it was at least something that like. You're like, I can do this. Right. Back forward, I can fucking do. On a shitty uh, on a shitty pad, I can do this eighty percent of the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I get you. I get whereas you. like, well, I was, this was before the SNES version was out, I'm yeah. thinking. But but yeah, like I, I and I eventually went from like Guile to Chun Li to Ryu and Ken. Mm. Uh weird. I when I was a kid or like when Whenever that game came out, twelve years old or something, I always thought the flash kick was like one of the harder moves to pull yeah, off. Because, yeah. because, maybe, because it's just, could, maybe it's just different for everybody. Because yeah, you could accidentally just, jump, I think is the yeah. reason. Oh, yeah. If you didn't do it right, you would end up in the air. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the Honda because the right, first yeah, special move I figured yeah, out yeah. is you mash yeah, the button. That button. I mean, that's why I went from from Guile to Chun Li. It was like, okay, I can, okay, <laughs> I can I've, I've got kicks. these Sonic Boom things down. Okay, I can do this and, yeah. and do the flash kick move for that. And How did you even find out about that stuff back then? Was that, I guess it was in magazines. So yes, it was yeah. in it was yeah. in magazines. Like I, I literally and... learned how to throw a fireball in that game in an arcade, like on a Saturday morning at like nine thirty. <laughs> yeah. I was by myself in there, and some older kid came over and showed me how to play nice. Ryu. Right, it nice. was cool. So do the fireball. And yeah, stuff? he told me how to do a fireball. It's the mystic arts. Yeah, it was like magic. Nice. <laughs> like whoa, that guy was 
Seth Gillian. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your hands like this. Yeah, was he playing cross-handed? Yeah. Wait, does he do that? He does. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's wow. left-handed. So, yeah, he oh, plays wow. cross. That's crazy. Yeah, that's cool. Huh. Um, but yeah, back to Duo A. Uh, at the time, they they uh, were ready to announce uh, three new characters. Well, actually, three like well, old characters. Oh, I but, guess. but like new, there's, new, like they're still announcing the roster. Returning, for, yeah, yeah return, exactly. Yeah. yeah, returning characters. They they've only had one like completely brand new character so far. Uh, so I imagine there's gonna be more announced. Uh, the game's not out until like February, so. Expect uh, any, any guest characters? Uh, like they've done that before. God, yeah, a couple yeah, times. Yeah, we'd love yeah, to. Uh, Virtual Fighter Ryu, characters. Uh, oh, really? Uh, Ninja, Akira. Or, oh, uh, no. Well, he's that's he's just part of that game. Is he just in, yeah, he's, he's just, just in just that game. I mean, there was a, yeah. there was a, a Halo Spartan in one of them. Right. Right. Yeah, that's right. They've, they've, yeah, they like they've oh, done yeah. some weird stuff here and there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but yeah, just uh, yesterday, or they, uh, it was I think it was Tuesday actually. They announced it. No, it was Friday. Last week. Um. They announced Bass, uh, Tina, and Elisa, I think, and they have like a wrestling faction in in the storyline, which <laughs> seems pretty pretty awesome. Uh, I'm eager to check that out. Who's who's the dude? Who's the, the, dude? the DOA dude? Fame Douglas. Fame Douglas. Fame Douglas. Douglas. Is, yeah. is he still a factor? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Did they show any kind of story mode stuff? Or no, yeah, no. Story. they just had verses online. Yeah, that's it. that makes sense. Yeah, the story mode is not. It's always ridiculous. I, I would I love to read about the story mode, but it, it's, it's it's like yeah, it's ridiculous, but it's like ridiculous on paper. Like I didn't even like going through it in four or five because it was like it was such a hassle. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. To like get through all the cutscenes and stuff that it usually wasn't even worth it what for as it? dumb else, as it got. Else time, elsewhere. Yeah, same time. <laughs> same time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the game still looks as good. And then it's by the end of it, you're sweaty. fighting the clone of what's her face. Like that's every DOA oh, story is yeah. just like they never broke out of like like DOA one was a virtual fighter like game, mm-hmm. and they never broke away from that. They're just like just like Doral. We need yep. our weird like liquid metal clone lady. Right. And yeah, I don't it just know. seems like it's always up. been that. I don't know. Or I guess they had like Tengu or whatever. Right? When you she find out the end, you are the liquid metal clone lady, and you killed the real uh, K- fuck. What's her name? Kasumi. 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 How's your fucking mind, man? I was not prepared uh, to be fucked up this early in the week, but you did it. It was like you opened your mouth and drugs came out, and now I'm over here like, what? Sound drugs. Yeah. Hot boxing your brain. Hot boxing my mind. Is that game out this year? February. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, aside from that, uh, Friday the Thirteenth uh, went into PlayStation Plus. Okay, like uh, free to play. Did they ever stuff. solve their whatever? Like there was a patch they couldn't release because yeah. there was was it like a legal like, issue like or new content? Like they cannot release new content, okay. right? But they can do bug fixes and they can okay. do modes and shit like that. But like you know, as far as licensed content, they're done. And also, Ilphonic has actually been removed from Whoa. development. Holy cow! Uh, so. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. Going but, back to Xenotic DLC uh, or uh, Nexius but, DLC. But my son has been really into that game, and I feel terrible uh, <laughs> because yeah, there's a lot of murder in that game and a lot of screaming and, and bloodshed and stuff. So I've I've had to very carefully choose which like execution animations I have. Like I've got the bear hug, right? Mm-hmm. That's just like, mm-hmm. oh, he's giving him a big hug. Or, and then it's nap time. Yeah, or he's got like Forever. a choke one. Uh yeah. And it's like, oh, tickle, tickle, <laughs> tickle, tickle. But he calls it the, the Kiki game. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes me so proud. Uh, but that's the only only place he's heard it. But now he refers to Jason as like, you know, play Kiki, ha ha. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> of course. Anytime. I love you. It's good stuff. Yeah. Halloween approaches. Yeah, it is the season. Mm. So they got some scary games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You Jeff. guys decorate yet? Yeah. No. 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 no My no. God. Watched watched half watched half of Adam's family last night. That, okay. That, nice. That probably good counts. Right? That's like it's like a decoration. I can't I can't, I can't decide if that movie's good or not. It's uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, yeah. It's all, it's fine. Got to watch yeah. some Monster Squad. Uh, mm-hmm. What? Do you, it's fine. It's so fuck just off like with this nineties. <laughs> fuck ass. off with this. Fake Goonies, motherfuckers. Fuck. Oh, man. I'm heated. Mm. Yeah. Right mm. now. Uh-uh. Yeah. I might, uh-uh. I might, I might be. Uh-uh. I, like, I like when that Wolfman gets kicked in the balls. Wolfman's got nards. Yeah, I like that. Damn right. Uh, Jesus. That's some bogus shit. 
They remade Monster Squad. Was that the one that they did? No, was that, what was that? What am I thinking of? They're like, like in the last few movies, the last Goosebumps. few years. There's, that's the one. Yeah, Goosebumps. Yeah. I'm going to fight you, people. Um, I updated my Switch to firmware 6.0 over the weekend. I dug my Switch out. That's the battery a big wasn't number. Dead. You haven't done it yet? Uh, wow. No, no. It just, I just hadn't touched that thing, and I don't even know. It's a big round um, number. What'd you get? Do you uh, run that online? N- no. <laughs> so I played some games without that online to kind of see... Because I just wasn't really clear if it was just first party stuff or kind of where the lines were and how it treated it. And it made me want to cancel my PlayStation Plus and see what that's like and Xbox Live Gold and see what that's like. Because, boy, it sucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, granted, I like patched and loaded up Splatoon. Mm. And think about Splatoon. Like the... The menu is a world you run around and you run straight mm-hmm. ahead to go to multiplayer and then the single player stuff is like down a around the corner, yeah. down a, a, a manhole cover and all this other stuff. So you're just running around this area full of stuff you can't really interact with. Like I, I, it turns out you can't get, uh, even though the app on the phone app still works for like saying, hey, I want this shirt. When you go into the game and say, I want the shirt I picked out on my phone. Every time you try to hit a server, it pops up a thing saying, you need to subscribe. Click here to wow. sign up. Wait, even for items? Even for items. What? For leaderboards in Spelunker Party. Like literally anytime uh, it touches the internet. Anytime it touches That's a insane. server, it it yeah. pops up and says, you That's should sign a, up for this. That's a bummer. And That's... so, I w- yeah, I guess I wasn't really clear on like which games needed it, which games didn't, and, and, and think... where they were drawing the lines. I feel like Fortnite is still the only one yeah. they've so, actively given an exemption to. Uh, so, yes, I was able to play Fortnite on the internet. But, like, Minecraft, I was able to, like, link my Xbox Live gamer tag to it. And then when you get into it from there and say, like, I want to see what servers are available, it just pops up and says, you got to pay for that, dog. Yeah. Um, like, is it, like, a system-level message? Yeah, it's a system-level message that pops up over it with, like, a, a <laughs> graphic. you got to pay for that, dog. Yeah, it's, it's like a... It's, 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 it's an upsell. It's, like, a, it's a thing here that says, like, hey, learn more about it right now. Um... At least and that it, fucking rabbit isn't there anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it, it was just uh, it was interesting to kind of see like the implementation of that from the side of not having it uh, as being like pretty rotten in some ways. But yeah, like you know, like I said, I, I tried to look at a leaderboard and it was like no, that's that's crazy. That's uh, that's too much. And and that seemed that yeah that that seemed like over the line. Like you got to entice people with something. But and maybe that's something that like you know because that game existed before the rollout of the service. Like yeah. it's just, and it's probably not a game they're going to patch because who cares about Spelunker Party? It was just a game that I realized like oh that's got some online stuff. I should have loaded up and see what it does. Um, I wonder if like in, you know in Super Mario Odyssey they have those moons that's like jump the jump rope fifty times and you get a little right. leaderboard that pops up. I, I wonder, wonder if even that would be oh, no man, way. I, that makes me want to check that out. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll dive back into that and look. Um, because I'm curious about it now. And then I played Fortnite and won. Hell yeah! It was it was, first, a, it was first a, time. Yeah, it was a fifty v fifty. I should say. Okay, so, you carried your team then. I mean, I, I got two. The, I got two kills. Dance? I got no. I couldn't figure out what the dance button was. Okay. Uh, I mean, on, that's on the, the first Switch, thing I pressed. So loading the Fortnite. How's yeah. it run on the Switch? Not great. So. Yeah, no. It, it was very hitchy. Also, mm. like it was, you know, I'd be running up a hill and everything was free. You know, just like network Ugh. wise, it just didn't run great. Did you mess with any of the Epic account change stuff? Like, were you able to link that up? To I was other... able to link it up. I had not linked up the Switch before. This, I, oh, okay. So, so, you didn't have to so un- this was a fresh download, and, okay. and I didn't go create a second yeah. account ever because I did, you know, didn't right. care enough about Fortnite. But right. I, but I did actually relaunch the Xbox version of Fortnite since they made that change, and it worked fine. It just uh, it, instead of showing the error message saying, "Hey, get bent." Uh, it just let me in. So you have all versions attached to your same Epic account? Now? Yes. Okay. And, you know, and then first time logging in on Xbox, it popped a bunch of achievements for mm. stuff I had done, on, you know, in the mm. Save the World part on PC. <laughs> Wait, did you buy the Save the World stuff on Xbox? No. You just downloaded the free-to-play version mm-hmm. of Fortnite? All that stuff is, yeah, that, like that. that's yeah. the sort of stuff that cr- crosses between platforms as well. Like, mm. that's part of your purchases. Okay. So yes, maybe I'll go download Fortnite on the <laughs> Xbox later. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I have a I, my character was wearing like the blue PlayStation. I think we might have talked about this last week, but my character was wearing like the blue PlayStation Plus free uh, outfit and glider or whatever they put out a while back. Uh, and the game has like you you show up as default, and and the game just says you're this is platform exclusive content. It doesn't even show <laughs> what it might look like. It's just a lock, <laughs> and just you can't use this. Uh, right. I'm like oh, okay, yeah, right. that's you know that's 
not the worst trade off. Totally. In the world. Yeah. I don't know. I think that stuff should just be. I, I would, I'll say Rocket League. There's like a Warthog or something in there that you can't use hmm. elsewhere. Uh, but I don't even think it shows up on the. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if that if that's if that has to be the price of getting the stuff ironed mm. out, like I can I can live totally. With that. Yeah, but I I feel like like final phase <laughs> of this stuff, like, wouldn't it be good? You know, especially like if if you're all negotiate, if every platform holder is getting their own bit of exclusive content, maybe that's the only way where it works out and makes sense. Um wouldn't you want it to show elsewhere? Because then it would be like, get this sick Warthog, just play it on Xbox. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like an ad for these other platforms. And then you, you in turn, as the non-Xbox platform, would be like, well, fuck, we need our own shit. Just play as a ratchet with wheels. Clank, car. Uh, Kratos' face, but with a car. It could be Mario. You could. What if you were Mario? What if they did Fortnite, but you could be Mario? And then the rabbits were there. What if it's just they just adapt the oh, Mario God. Rabbids RTS into a battle royale game? What if, All Jeff? Right. No. Okay. What if they did that? More like in three weeks. Yeah. More like God of Car. There you go. Hmm. See. Uh, what else did I do? So yeah, I, I did that stuff. I've been playing some more Let It Die, um, and I've been uninstalling Ring of Elysium. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, huh. Completely? Or any remnants left on I mean, I to, ran, ran a full scan and deleted some directories and all that other stuff. So, yeah. You downloaded it from Steam, did, which sounds yeah. like the right. safest. Well, fucking, Oh, were there yeah. other places to get to the yeah. launcher? So the, there, was a, there was a stir about six months ago uh, over Ring of Elysium having a download on, like, the Tencent site or wherever it was. Uh, in China. Oh, okay. Um, so I, th- I think this was people going out and finding the uh, the that version of the game and, and playing it, even though it wasn't officially ruled out in this territory. Hmm. Uh, that's my understanding of it. And people were saying like, Oh, this thing inst- has a, some as part of its installer, it's got a Trojan in it or something that's marked as a Trojan. Like, I, I don't know. Um, Saw people theorizing it was everything from a key logger to Bitcoin miner. And so now, or... yeah, now there's people saying that the Steam version or they're like, you know, it's seeing negative Steam reviews because people are saying it's it's got, you know, it's stealing data. It's doing this, it's doing that. And it's I'm sensitive to this stuff because I, you know, like keeping computers safe and secure is a as a prime is a is a very important thing to do. So I understand people being cautious and all that other stuff. Infosec very big in totally. 2018. Yeah, but as I dug into this more and more, I couldn't find anything that was definitive saying this is doing this uh or this is bad or or look at this even though even though we haven't dissected it to figure out exactly what it's doing, we think it's doing this. There was no clear indicator of like, hey, here's the problem with Ring of Elysium. Instead, it was like a bunch of people going like, it's got that shit in it. And then a bunch of people going like, no, I don't, I'm, or, or, I don't know. I ran a scan. It's fine. And a bunch of people going, no, it's got that shit in it. Uh, and, you know, long YouTube videos of people trying, you know, that, that just didn't, there was no clear cut. Here's what it is. Right. And that was very frustrating. So I uninstalled it. And I'm like, I don't know if there's actually a problem uh, because all the discussion around it is just a fucking mess. Uh, That's how advanced it is. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're running the bots and like, oh, yeah, exactly. Fuck. They're burying the, the negative reviews with positive reviews. Saying this goes all the way to the this top. This goes all the way to the top. That's why that guy got disappeared. <gasps> Head of Interpol <laughs> was installing things into the Ring of Elysium client. And they found it out, and they went like, "We gotta get him out of here before he he talks." Tencent owns ten percent of Interpol, so yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? Like the last contact that guy had with anybody was texting a photo of a knife to his wife. It was an emoji. It wasn't even a photo. Oh, wow. Yeah. What? Oh, it was a ni- it was a knife emoji and wait for my call. Wow. Fucking what? Ow. Boom. Gone. Yeah. Uh, Man. So yeah, I don't know. Oh, I don't know what the deal with Ring of Elysium is, uh, but uh, you know, or anything else. But yeah, <laughs> but yes, also yes, anything else. Uh, that's that's how they want it. Apparently, they want you off guard. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what to make of that. Hmm. Um, the but but out of caution, I've uninstalled yeah, it. Maybe ran, just hold ran, on. Ran a few scans with some different while. stuff, yeah. and we'll wait and see you, how this you, shakes out. What do you like these days? What do I like these days? Like I, just, uh, I just use like the built-in Windows the Defender. The Windows Defender stuff has, has gotten a lot better. Yeah. Um, there were definitely a lot of people talking about malware bytes. Uh, That's and what I've always used. So I grabbed that. And 
ran it through the ran stuff through there but this was after i had uninstalled it so yeah. you know it was, it was, i was kind of looking for like hey is there any kind of remnants i want a deep clean yeah it's still sitting on the machine in the studio so steam, if, we, if we wanted to yeah steam feeling kind of like a lawless place lately well, he, but like that, th this is a different thing, right? I mean, there's the lawless place of like fucking whoops. We don't have time to check and see if they stole a song before uploading this game. Well, that's or a bunch of assets. And then there's there's also been a decent number of like weird crypto games. Yeah, there was that weird indie game that was mining cryptocurrency. Sure, a few yeah. Months yeah. Ago. Like, yeah. you know, huge a huge stolen asset problem. Yeah. Like like legal problems on their end are one thing, but exposing your customer base yes, to, the, to the, yeah. potential danger. That's right. Quite, that's the, uh, quite another. That's the hard part. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they need to beef that up. <laughs> Have somebody look at the video games on their platform. That, no, don't be crazy. We'll build an, a, a, we'll build a process that will scan it. No humans will have to interact with this. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I I uninstalled it. I don't know what to make of it right now. Just be, like I said, you know, digging through it, it's it's just it just all comes across as so ambiguous. Like no one is is able to say definitively, yes, this shit is bad. Uh, they're more saying like, uh, we heard it was bad from someone else, or we looked at a thing and this looks fishy, but I don't know. Still, it's and, better be yeah. safe than sorry. I mean, I I've, I feel like not that I've played that game, but the tipping point for me would be where it's kind of an awful lot like several other games already on the market. Yeah, and is it worth the risk? Right. Like snowboarding, pretty sure. good. Sure, but but uh, I could, you want to take this thing all the way to the fucking bottom, fucking feeding conspiracy, fucking city. What if another game is running this campaign? Hmm. What if another game, another battle royale game, is foisting this huh. out there to sink Ring of Elysium before it can get through? Hmm. Because think about it, like Cuisine you know, Royale. you know, if you hear like Ben told me, like Ben wrote me yesterday and said, "Hey, did you hear about Ring of Elysium?" And I went and looked and went, mm, "This doesn't seem like a problem," but mm, and I uninstalled it. <laughs> so sure. <laughs> sure, even though I don't know, and even though you're not sure if you were ever going to play that again, right? Well, no, I, I probably would have. Like okay. the snowboarding stuff is fun enough. Right. Like you know, that game's fine. I, I'm interested to see how it develops. Um, but now I'm like, well, shit, until this gets resolved. And at what point is it resolved? Is it someone from the team, someone, some community manager from Tencent coming out and going, no, nah, it's fine. Like, that's not going to be enough for anybody, especially like the people that have spent the last, I don't know how long, months in some cases, uh, for the stuff that was in the, the downloader six months ago, like keeping this going and going, this shit's fucked, this shit's fucked. Like, it's, a, I don't know. It's uh, this is a really cool information environment that we have these it's days. really fucking great. It's good stuff. Uh, and that's why I'm launching a platform where you can know what the truth is because Ooh. we're going to assign it a numerical ID. <laughs> and you'll get the numerical ID and then cross-reference it and okay. you're going to go, okay, this is true because the numbers line up. Can I also rate journalists? At the, like I feel like looping that in would help. Oh, if fuck, I could why, just, not? Like, why yeah, not? Why okay. not? Why not? Why cool. not? Yeah. Even like a credibility rating. It, and... yeah, of course. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't we do this? Uh, I have no, no there's, good it, it, This whole thing sounds beyond reproach. There's no way mm. that an automated system like this could ever be uh, subverted or, or used uh, in a negative way. No. No. By people within the community or outside of the country. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> why not? Just, All advances in technology are positive. Yes, as nothing, long as nothing as, can regress. As Just long fucking as, jack me into a computer. That's right. As long as we're moving forward, what could the fucking worst that could happen? I want to stim hack my life away. That's right. How am I going to fucking work for a faceless garbage corporation if they aren't also the government at the same time? I want there to be a corporation. The books, the don't books, worry, we'll get there. The books yeah. I read growing up have to come true even in the worst <laughs> ways. Give me a cyber katana. Yes. Oh, should you play it? Should you play anything else? No, I don't know. Ring of Elysium <laughs> seems all right. Man, feel sick. Um, Same. <laughs> Bypass these subroutines. I already Jack felt sick, but, now, but this isn't helping. Install Ooh. cheat engine. Take control of your life. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Uh, real quick before we go to break, I did the Destiny raid. Yeah. Ask me anything about the Destiny raid. How did you like long it? Did it take? I so. Oh, did you get a um, cool emote? Uh, I didn't get any emotes. What the fuck? But I got Why? five valuable pieces of actual gear that affect my playing experience. So I'll take it. Okay. Uh, Congratulations on getting stuff that enhances your playing experience just <laughs> as there's nothing left to play. The number went up. All right. Okay. What's your number at now? A lot. 575. Okay. You went in 560? Uh, I was like 558, okay. 559. Right. Well, I, I've done more since then. Yeah, it was yeah. like, I got probably uh, 12, 12, 
12 light out of it or something. Right. So, uh, how long so the next expansion, which automatically makes all that gear December. Complete. Okay. Yeah. All right. But now I can do the raid again and it won't be as hard this time. Oh, Are you going to do gotcha. the raid again? Probably. Okay. We did. So, but uh, how long was it? Well, so I, I went in with an experienced group. Yeah. And we got through the first boss in like two tries. And then we got through the second boss in the first try. Yeah. And then we got through the fir- third one in like maybe two, three tries. Like it was just going. Yeah. Was that the next thing I knew? Fun? It was six hours later. Wow. And I had started experiencing that, you know, that weird time dilation that starts to kick in after s- multiple hours of a Destiny raid? Yeah. Yeah. It was very okay. much like, wait, when did the sun go down? Right. <laughs> Hang on. I started this at 3.30 and it's almost 10 now. What is... Mm. Where am I? Uh, and most mm. of that time was spent on the last boss. Okay. So that last boss is really fucked. And this, was, this was a team of people... I think, two, most of them, I think maybe two of them had finished the whole thing, but okay. all of them had gotten like to the boss before. Oh, oh, oh. Which is kind of why we plowed through it and then just hit that wall. But man, that thing is... I probably will never, ever, ever do a blind Destiny raid again because that would have probably taken all fucking weekend oh, to I get through know. based on past experience. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> Dude. It took us like 24 hours. <laughs> but like that's th- that's what you're signing up for, right? There's nothing else like that in game or there aren't a lot of things like that in gaming. Well, two, two things about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, two things about that. Like, two of our people were kind of too low level for what we were trying to do. Yeah, that's right. You know who you are. That's what right. Are you, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> the other thing is that that Callus fight is like historically terrible in mm-hmm. Destiny terms. Like everybody says it's the worst boss in any raid ever. Glad that's my only raid experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That thing is god awful this i mean this thing this thing is whatever logical. man that you shoot that cup it makes the noise that's that, good that stuff shit, that stuff's man. good but that's the part thing the part where things can just go bad kind of outside your control yeah. a little bit like so. th- this thing this thing like the pieces all fit together and everything makes sense you just have to execute and there's mm-hmm. a lot to execute and it's really hard and then after you fight the boss i guess this is kind of a raid spoiler if you really care nope after you fight the giant boss, uh-huh. you run down its throat, okay, and you run inside it, and you fight its heart like it's the fucking end of Contra. Nice. Okay, that's cool. It's pretty good. Yeah, Contra's good. And then after you beat the boss, there is a whole encounter left where you have to run the heart out of the raid. Oh wow, it's get a weird thing. Here. That's a neat idea. Yeah, so there's some pretty cool ideas in this thing. The Go second, on, get. the second boss in the raid is basically a running fight, like you are on the move through mm. a long area because you can't stop. Right, like if you stay in one place too long, you die. Yeah. So you have to be moving and coordinating and like. Do they have a lot of good? So this is maybe like now that I've done a couple of raids and and as I think about like how these mechanics are or whatever, there are a lot of things in that game where you die because there are words on the screen ticking down and saying, "Oh, you got killed by a eh, something." Yeah. Like, <laughs> is is that running fight like that where it's just like, oh, well, the shadow of. <sighs> It's hard to Cape say. Connect, like, like, it's just some mystical fucking like words we wrote on the screen. There probably, there probably are uh, named debuffs showing up. Yeah. Like, I was just, like, I, I barely had time to take everything in before like, we were on the next thing. What I'm thing. saying is, like, when you lose, do you feel like you know why you lost? <laughs> like, uh, that's the thing that... Uh, well, like I said, there we were, barely... A lot of cases are just like, oh, well, the screen turned white and we all died. I guess there's some timer or something we are not doing. It's hard for, it's hard but... for me to say because they knew what was going on so yeah, well yeah. that I never had a chance okay. to wonder. They, they, most of the time, they told me before we even started the fight what yeah. was going to happen so that... I, I, didn't I would really even have want just like fake, like, okay, if you lag too far behind, like just some laser blasts are going to come from off screen oh. and you're going to see yourself get mowed down mm. and go up. Oh, yep. Yeah. As opposed to just like, so you're just oh, talking about the, the abrupt, happened. just the abrupt wipe. Oh. Yes. Yeah. The, the yeah. abrupt wipe, yes. I think, is yes. super. Like, yeah. You still, you still die. It's dumb. Like they, they should, they should put some theatrics into their abrupt wipes mm, to sure. make them seem like logical. Yeah, I could see that. Although, I mean, after the two dozenth time it happens, you kind of just want it to be over as fast as possible so you can try it again. But that's something after you've wiped twenty times in a raid, they should have like, yes, like cut to the cinematics. Yeah. Fewer cinematics. You sure. know what happened. Yeah. You lost. Mm-hmm. Let's roll it back. Uh, that thing's really cool, though. Like it, it's all it looks all Lord of the Rings. Like the Woken are just straight up space elves at this point. Huh. It's, it's some really nice is, looking is stuff. This Lord of the Rings forty k. Uh, no, <laughs> it's just more like regular Lord of the Rings. Uh, I mean, I can't help but notice that you're like space people with floating robots and guns. I mean, mm. I didn't see Lord of the Rings, admittedly. Yeah. Um, I'm mostly talking like architecture. It feels okay. very mystical. Okay. Gimli gets a uh, laser mini gun in the two towers. Shit. Yeah. That's okay. Right. All right. Check it out. It's pretty cool. All right. Maybe I will watch that stuff. Yeah. It always looks so bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's, 
It's a solid raid. All right. It's hard. It, yeah, it's just a weird experience going in with people who already know everything about it because mm-hmm. you are just kind of following instructions and just yeah doing what you're told. Well, so. I'm looking forward to ranking of Destiny raids yeah. where you play all the raids again and oh, rank man. them scientifically. Uh, yeah, you solo all the raids. Yeah. Man. Great. You're level 275 now. Great. That's true. Yeah, it's only like twenty five. Is the first is the first one still the best? Is the Vault of Glass still Uh, the best raid? This one's up there. This one, I'd say, this one in the Oryx raid. Hmm. I don't Uh, think I didn't do the Oryx raid. Oh, is that the one we did? Okay. Shit. I guess I've done. I guess I've done three raids. That's the Taken King one. Those are the best. Vault of Glass, the Oryx one, and this one are probably the best. Okay. But I haven't done all the the raid layers from from this thing. Yeah. Probably get there someday. Hmm. All right. Let's take our first break. Let's take our first break. Hey man, you want some speakers? Whoa, where, where, where do they come from? Does, does, does it doesn't does it matter where they come where from? Where are you keeping them? Can I see them? All right, all right. I got the back of this van. Come uh, look around here. Wait, I, I'm not. I don't like just, the looks. Of, I don't like the looks around, of this alleyway. Just, just come into come into this alley. <sighs> hey, step into my office. Hey, don't let don't let anybody see us. No, no. Okay. okay. Open up the back of the van. Yeah. And I want you uh-huh. to meet Sonos Beam. Whoa. The smart compact sound bar for your TV. And the newest addition to the easy-to-use home sound system. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The Sonos Beam. What do you think? Uh, I, it looks like a speaker to me. Yeah, there you go. It's designed to play everything. Wow. Use music. Uh-huh. Radio. Whoa. Everyone loves the radio. Yeah. Uh, movies, TV, podcasts. Spoken word. So, hey, do you have do you have some spoken word? Maybe. Then you can play it on this Sonos Beam. Yeah. You can even use AirPlay. So if you got stuff on your iPhone, your iPad... Mm. I don't know, man. You can get it on the beam. Beam some music to your beam. Yeah, get beam it, beam it up. Okay. Uh, you can be a beam professional. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the rich sound <laughs> uh, that'll fill the room. It's got deep bass, detailed stereo separation for music, mm. and uh, the idea is here you're gonna get a crystal clear dialogue for TV and movies. Now you've been listening to this Sonos beam yep. here uh, that I've set up in. This and our the, your testing my facility. showroom here. Uh-huh. What, yeah. do you, what do you think of the sound? What do you what do you what do you think of it? Sounds like it's got a tweeter and a woofer. Well, hey, that's what it, that's my professional opinion. That's what you want. Yeah. You want the highs to sound high. Uh-huh. You want the lows to sound low. That's right, bassy. And, yeah, and it'll sync up with your existing remote. One cable to connect it up to your TV. Mm. Hands-free control with Alexa, which is all built right in. Wow, she's well, a nice lady. Yeah, talk to Alexa. Yeah. What's Alexa up to? She'll help you out. That's right. Uh, it's got to go wrong. A Sonos app for setup. Now th- th- you've been you've been clicking through this setup step by step here mm-hmm. in my mobile showroom. Uh, how do you feel about the step by step setup? The Sonos app, that sort of experience. What Have do you, you heard about Wi-Fi? I've heard about wireless wireless. Uh-huh. How's, how's it? Uh, is it? Is it? Uh, how's it go? It makes use of that. Okay. Setup. All right. That's Outstanding. My understanding is it is cord free. Yeah, well, yeah, no, it is wireless. It plug, says right there. Plug the it wall. in and go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you say why? Because uh-huh. there's no wires. Yeah. That's what the why and Wi-Fi means. That's right. Uh, and hey, yeah. if you want to not have to set this thing up, uh-huh. you can. Uh-huh. Obviously, you can. Okay. You did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. It is, it is definitely possible. You too uh-huh. can set one of these up. Like Bono? Like the Edge can uh, set up? Are you saying not. the Edge could set up a Sonos Beam? I bet he could. I bet he could. Yeah. He's probably got a pedal for that. Oh, uh, yeah. At this point, definitely. Uh, but also, he's got people for that. That's Everyone true. has people for that. If yeah. you live in any major metropolitan area, mm. uh, they've got a service called Up and Running, where a Sonos expert delivery uh, will, will you know schedule something and come and set up your system absolutely free. It's a friend of yours? It's a, look, it's a friend of Sonos's. Any friend okay. of Sonos's is a friend of mine. Okay. Uh, you can just order... From Sonos.com. That's S-O-N-O-S dot com. And select up and running at checkout if you qualify. Okay. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Punch in the zip code. Yeah. Speakers. Tell them where you are. Speakers. 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 Are you all ready for some news? Lay it on me. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. What time is it? What's your your pre-news ritual? Just... Get loose in the shoulders. Uh-huh. Uh, I I usually twist when I check the news. I'm usually like curled up in a ball. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah. As For of me, late, it's it's better to shield yourself. Yeah. Uh, ketamine. Okay. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Be at the bottom of the hole. 
Yeah. When the news hits you. News can't find me there. This works whatever. for Mario Party. Works for the news. Nice. Uh, all right. I'm going to start with some late breaking news that happened like a, a couple hours ago. Right before this thing started. Yeah. This thing being this podcast. Oh. Uh, Kotaku has run a report quoting, I believe, at least two sources. Three people. I'm sorry. According to three people briefed on the negotiations uh, that Microsoft is close to closing a deal to acquire Obsidian Entertainment. That's a good game. Oh. Uh, which, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Fairly big deal, yeah, I would I mean, say. Think about the, so they spent a big portion of their E3 press conference talking about the studios that they had acquired. Yeah, and right. It was what? Like the people so Ninja Theory, we have View, Ninja uh, Theory. Who's, uh, uh, Playground uh, Games. Playground. I can't remember the We Happy Few developer. You know, it was like yeah. Yeah, s- s- studios, like yeah, full, full right. studios, but nothing to the size of. And the, the zombie, whatever the zombie game. The, uh, oh, uh, yeah. Dead Labs. Studio. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Nothing to the scale of Obsidian, I think. Well, yeah. a, uh, a a name of yeah. Obsidian so scale is a Obsidian. Yeah, Obsidian is a weird one because they are beloved. They are about as beloved, I think, as like an RPG developer could be. Yeah, but you know, they've been crowdfunding games lately. Oh, it's been true. they've had you know, multiple kind of a... projects canceled or like kind of yanked out from under them or like forced to release early. Like they've had a weird checkered history of not. Yeah, maybe hmm. not finding like success. Chris like Chris Avalone is out there, like with some oh God, not, right. very, yes. not at all nice things also, to say also, about yes, Chris Avalone, the end of his time at, yes. at Obsidian, and he was a part owner. Yeah, um, um, that I've just in general, maybe they have not found the success uh, proportionate to their pedigree. <laughs> well, you know say. what would help them find that success? Yeah. A bunch of money, money. yeah, yeah. yeah. A shit ton the, of money. The resources to keep company it going with sure. a company with billions of dollars in the bank. Maybe they could peel <laughs> off a few hmm. for them to keep making games. Um, yeah, you know they made Fallout New Vegas, Knights of the Old Republic two, uh, more more recently Pillars of Eternity. Um, people like those games an awful lot. Yeah, people still talk about Fallout New Vegas as like one of the best RPGs ever made. Sure, yeah, it might uh, be a hot take, but this seems like a good get yeah yeah if they can take these resources and do something with it i mean this story and they stress this deal has not closed it could fall apart but they believe it is only a matter of time uh, until it is official uh i was gonna say one quote from the story though says a person familiar with goings on at microsoft said the company has been looking to bolster its pc development Mm-hmm. which makes the PC-focused mm-hmm. Obsidian a perfect fit. So maybe not necessarily yeah. like getting them to make some big Xbox exclusive or something. Right. And even, even then, like I was, I was just about to say, the, the only reason this doesn't give me a, a ton of worry is the cross-play stuff from Microsoft have, has been really good, especially with like Game Pass now, yeah. right. where you just can go from three, uh, Xbox One to PC effortlessly. Yeah. Like yeah. Makes, when, the, when the store works. Yeah. Sorry. It, it makes when was the last time you had a problem with it? Just with Forza. Really? Weird. Yeah, really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, I had to completely... Oh, man. Yeah, it was a process. I had to completely reinstall the store. Yeah, I've had... Do you log into been, Windows with a Microsoft account? Yeah. Or, huh. yeah. It's been a good while since that happened to me, but I know what you're talking about. That yeah. Windows store can be real weird. It happened yeah. to me with Cuphead. It was really bad. Mm. Um, I feel like it hasn't happened to me since like the first rollout. Really? Of it. And then there was some weird shit around then, and, and it hasn't... Yeah. ReCore, Cuphead, yeah. there's like four or five games that's, yeah. that's all been an issue uh kotaku sought comment from both companies we do not comment on rumors or speculation said a microsoft spokesperson <laughs> the obsidian spokesperson said unfortunately we don't comment on rumors or speculation other than to say that the rumors album by fleetwood mac still holds up no denying that they're having a little fun so yeah probably happening accurate uh, I guess yeah. I didn't realize uh, Obsidian uh, is working on a game for 2K also. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, then private. Yeah. And also, I didn't know 2K or... had an imprint called Private Division, apparently. Yeah. They announced that a while back. It's, yeah. Um, Tell me about your Private Division. Well, it's uh, it's the third of me that is uh, from the bottom up. That first third from the floor up is the most private of divisions. Wait. Mm. A third of you is from the ground to your waist? No, I'm saying that third. Oh, okay. Uh, from see. the floor up, whatever that distance so is. Like, kind of like thought. I'd say like lower thighs. Above thigh-ish. the knee. Right. Yeah. 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 Maybe a little above the knee. It's okay. Extremely private. Right. I would say my middle third is probably my most private. Wow. Yeah. I keep that under. 
I saw Fleetwood Mac in concert, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah, they had to, Stevie Nicks had to have a, a like on the floor above her or right in front of her. She had to have the the city name <laughs> printed out. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Welcome, residents of Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This Great. this seems like a good thing for Obsidian. Uh, wow. This seems like a solid exit strategy for. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know. Like um, the, that's the thing. You like you you think about the stuff that that Chris Avalon had to say. Like, yeah, I mean, that like, stuff. Like sure. Some of the sure. like what Obsidian is Microsoft getting? That's that's uh, fair. There, there's all that sort of. But I I don't know enough about it. Yeah. Uh, our Obsidian editor is not in the country yeah. right now. So. <laughs> Wait a minute. Very Hold on. Con- how convenient <laughs> yeah. that he happened to leave the country vacation <laughs> right before this Posting news broke. Posting pictures from Spain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, I see. Likely story. Um, uh, also, I mean, you know, things with Microsoft and their developers have been maybe a little weird the last few years with projects getting canceled and like. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and and also, you know, if, if you think about Game Pass and uh, you know, like pushing that as a service, it's really not something they can push to PC, like people who don't own an Xbox. Like Game Pass is not maybe is not a great value right now. Yeah. Um, because you're only like, getting like a handful of it's that really first, of those first-party first part, games. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if they're able to bolster PC development, or then if, they are able to say, "Oh, here's like some sure. more great reasons mm-hmm. to sign up for Game Pass." Yeah, that, even if you don't own an Xbox, that, that makes sense as a business case for sure. Uh, aren't there a few third parties doing like what? There what, are is some. what is it? What is it? Is UWP? UWP, UWP is yeah. the thing that lets the game run on both platforms well that's like, the uwp is the yeah i guess so yeah universal whatever whatever ease yeah, development like between like i want to say like shadow of war i think was a game that was there was a version you, of like it you for buy sale. it you buy it if you bought it on the xbox you also got it on the windows store for free yeah. really? i'm pretty sure there was was it the last dead rising i feel like there was a capcom game somewhere in the mix there that supported all this stuff hey. um no i think that I one they so. sold separately okay. i think each one was its own separate purchase uh, and anyway yeah i, I want to say there are a few third parties that have gotten in on that but even that, uh, it's not enough to like, it's not like if you're a game for sale in the Windows store, you're not part of Game Pass. Like that's a whole separate, right, yeah, you know, yeah. thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You know, it's, everyone's going to shore up content and try to make sure that their streaming video game service is the best. Yep. And like long term, that's probably where all this yeah. goes. And this reminds me of that rumor coming out of E3 that they had other acquisitions yep. they were exploring. Mm-hmm. Uh, so with may have been one of them with Microsoft turning up the heat and buying these studios kind of and making a big deal about it. Does that put any pressure on Sony to start looking? I mean, I'm sure they've, or they've been looking, but does this put any pressure on them? They've to got do such, stuff? they've got such strong first party development already. Okay. Like they've been fucking killing it on the first party front. I feel like uh, they've got games that people care about. And that's uh, like, I feel like Microsoft used to like last generation that like Microsoft had that stuff sewn up pretty mm-hmm. well. Also, but it really feels like over the course of this generation, the wheels fell off of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you know, they probably just need to acquire some studios and get some games in the yeah. pipeline or, or whatever, you know, yeah, whatever they, they spent some money trying to get, you know, they tried to make recore happen. You know, they, they've, they've taken some swings and miss and canceled yeah. some games. It's, oh, they, man, they've record, had some record was almost there. That thing just came out on steam like last month. Yeah. I saw that. Like, it was like a top seller the day it came out. Yeah, yeah. I think it debuted at like twenty bucks. But it's not a terrible game. It's yeah. Phantom Dust. Yeah, to yeah. Like all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just a lot of bizarre scale, scale bound anymore. Yeah, hmm. uh, yeah. I don't think Sony needs any any help there. I think they they are doing quite well on the first party front. Uh, I don't know. That, well, yeah. I think it's also it feels like a different focus from where Microsoft had it last time around. Where I, I don't feel like Sony has like a good multiplayer game. Mm, uh, sure. The, yeah, they've been going their, very like kind of single player like, story heavy. They're stuff. they're really they've really leaned in hard on the like prestige single player thing. Yeah, uh, which I'm, and, I'm glad you know. Yeah, I'm glad somebody's doing that. Um, yeah, um, especially since you had some companies like EA talking about we don't think the future lies. Yeah, in single player like everything else that. wants to be Destiny now. Like happy somebody's doing that stuff. Uh, sorry, my text editor just crashed. Um. But what if you could team up with other Spider-Mans and go on spider adventures? Like from the other universes? Sure. Like from yeah. the you could all wear universe? your own custom costumes. Is John Mulaney there? Yes. <laughs> Great. Spider-Ham. Because yeah. he's playing with you because you're now best friends with John Mulaney. I'm, I, I'm Nick Kroll. Yeah. 
cool. What if there were a bunch of other Marvel characters there and, and there was a bunch of loot that dropped? Also, maybe like the camera is more of an overhead. No, never never work. Sort of perspective. Yeah. No, no, never mm. work. That's a shame. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're talking about Xbox, I'll, I'm going to jump stories here. Uh, also, you mentioned streaming services. Microsoft. Unprecedented. Yeah, right. Breaking the script here. Microsoft came out and put a name on their streaming initiative. It is Project X Cloud. Okay. Sure. It's literally right. the most, Xcloud. It's the oh, most it, boring it's, it's name. Project Cross Cloud oh, from man. the makers of Project Cross Zone. Of course, I see. Uh, no. Um, probably not a final name, but and and this announcement is largely just sort of like here's some of the tech behind it. Here's what our preliminary beta plans are. It is certainly not like pricing and schedule and game offerings type stuff yet. Yeah, it's, it's like more, a, it's more of a work in progress. Like, hey, we're still really serious about this streaming thing. Yeah, like they talk about Azure a lot in this announcement. Right, like it's it's more of a back end. Like, here's how we're building this. And this is a you know this. I wonder if this ends up being or, or if this was maybe spurred on by the Google announcement. Mm. Uh, to yeah, the timing did seem a little bit. Google out there saying they're testing. You know, they're now testing this Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. in Chrome yes. thing. So uh, weird. I was expecting more from the people who brought us Durango than X Cloud. It's just yeah. the most. Si- we need a streaming. We need a cloud thing for our X. Does it do anything for you? But then, if if the well, so d- here's the thing though: the X is lowercase, the C is uppercase. So it's not like Xbox. It's it hmm. is like Xbox though. It's a lowercase <laughs> X though. It's true. It's only when you pronounce it out loud that I thought like, oh right, like the Xbox. But reading it, it seems like a d- an even dumber name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess the one somewhat interesting kind of factoid out of this announcement is that so they talk about you know you'll be able to play it on phones, tablets, whatever. They talk about being able to pair Xbox One controllers through Bluetooth, Bluetooth with that stuff. Mm-hmm. But they also showed off their sort of preliminary touch virtual controllers. Oh, stuff. like on a tablet yeah. or phone? Okay. And they say they are working hard on making that like a small footprint as possible Okay, uh, to play. I mean, it's basically Fortnite, right? Like that's how people play Fortnite yep. on phones, right? Uh, it looks a lot like that. And a lot of like per game customization. It sounds like they want to make that layer easy for I, developers. That is actually to that is the other thing. The, the You're like, right. Okay, what you know? Because different games are going to need different, you know, on screen interfaces, and so yes. making it easy for that stuff to be uh, developed. Uh, actually, maybe maybe the biggest deal in this whole thing is this line here: developers of the more than three thousand games available on Xbox One today, and those building the thousands that are coming in the future will be able to deploy and dramatically scale access to their games across all devices on Project X Cloud with no additional work. So that makes it sound like any game that exists on the Xbox is is ready to go. Ready to, like business stuff aside. Yeah, like they can like make it run in a server rack yeah, somewhere. There's, there's no work to do, so any game could potentially end up on this service. That sounds uh, pretty rad. Yeah, uh, I've had yeah, varying success. I've had some pretty good success with like the NVIDIA Shield stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's worked really well. Um I'm really excited to see yeah, they say, like, where uh, this goes. They say right now their tests are running at 10 megabits a second. Uh, they says Project X Cloud will have the capability to make game streaming possible on 4G networks. Mm-hmm. Okay. And will dynamically scale to push against the outer limits of what's possible on 5G networks as they roll out globally. Huh. I love me some dynamic scaling. Right, especially on 5G. The best kind. Ooh. I love Gs. Uh... Yeah, you know, they pay a lot of lip service to getting latency down and stuff like that. Kind of all the stuff you would expect. I mean, that's the important stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, of you course, know, of course. Like but it. we'll see. You know, nobody knows until they get their hands on it. Right. Uh, they are rolling out public tests next year. Okay. So hopefully we'll get to try this thing not that far off. Yeah. God, it's almost next year. Right? It is almost next year. Man. Okay. Um. All right. <laughs> this was going to be the, the top story. Before this other stuff happened. Uh, The Wall Street Journal has run a report citing suppliers and others with direct knowledge of plans uh, that Nintendo is readying a new version of the Switch to launch next year. Boom. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll read a couple of the quotes from this report that are the most salient. Sales of the Switch introduced in March 2017 are still solid but are no longer delivering the favorable surprises that marked the machine's first year on the market. Nintendo shares, which rose sharply last year, have trailed the broader stock market this year. The move to update the Switch suggests the company is moving quickly to ensure its flagship product doesn't lose competitiveness. Mm -hmm. Nintendo is still debating what new hardware and software features to include in the upgrade and weighing the cost of the features. 
One option is improving the display. Uh, the current Switch uses a lower-end LCD without some technologies that are standard in more recent smartphone LCDs. Updating the display with these technologies would make it brighter, thinner, and more energy efficient. Uh, the updated Switch isn't expected to adopt the OLED panels used in the iPhone X. Hmm. Uh, and then the author of this story, uh, Takashi Moji, Mochizuki, uh, also tweeted about it later on and said, New version of Nintendo Switch may arrive as soon as summer next year. Machine specs not finalized yet, but one option is improvement on display. Third-party publishers hope a new Switch would give clear hint what would happen on 3DS line. Oh, hmm. like I guess wondering if that's just going to be if phased this out. This is the completely. thing that finally oh, like okay. ends 3DS, ends 3DS support because if, if they're th trying to make decisions about 3DS software, then yeah. yeah. Um, that last bit makes it almost makes you almost wonder if they're going to put out like a cheaper version, like yeah. a budget model, right? Um, like if they're maybe not losing features, but finding ways to you know reduce manufacturing costs and like put out a. But at the same time, they're talking about a better display. Yeah, as like a potential option. But though, uh, you know, like you right, can, just... I think. I, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you can f save on parts sometimes when you just get into like economies of scale, right? Like, right. If, if, if something is more mass produced, but it happens to be newer, you might still save money because you're like you have to pay more for bespoke parts right. that nobody else needs anymore. Yeah, like if, if the switch, if the screens works. in the switch are if that's like not standard. being used as much yeah. in other yeah. tablets and other stuff like that. Like then... if they can make a volume purchase of better right. screens from somebody that might actually still save them money. Yeah. I, have, I think that's how that stuff works. Uh, I mean, as someone who plays my Switch probably every day in handheld mode specifically, uh, I really the only upgrades I'm looking for is sharper screen would be nice. Um, I would like a full bleed screen as, instead of that black border around that mm -hmm. you get. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the specifics of that. Yeah, better battery life, and mm -hmm. I mean it, it's personal, but I would like it if it was slightly larger, just so I could get bigger Joy Cons on there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a me problem. Yeah, and not I don't. I don't think it's just you. I don't know that I love the ergonomics of the Switch a ton either, personally. But <sighs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, the, there's okay. the stuff around voice chat and, and Bluetooth and, and right. that sort of stuff that I don't, I don't know if yes. that's like a hardware thing that yeah. they need to do. Dude, yeah, or, fuck, man. Have Bluetooth headphone support but, would maybe be enough like, to make me want to get a new one. That sort of stuff would be easy or well, what, the fuck, what the fuck do I know? Like, in theory, would be easy Yeah. Um. to to add on to it. Um. But I don't that's that's not enough, you know, to, to try to sell it as like, hey, it's an upgraded thing. Um, it could be a mix, right? I mean, it, it could be a mix of like, hey, we've got some cost saving stuff that we can make these things uh, more cheaply, but you know, along the way, we've beefed it up to maintain the same price or some mix of it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess the big biggest question is: is this something that's going to be branded as a distinctive new version? Right? Will this be? Yeah. A like, is this new, the new 3ds? Is this an XL? Is yeah. this a LL? You know, whatever. Like is, it, is it branded as such? You know, right? Or, or do they just transparently introduce this new model as the old model? Right. Without, what's without what's going to give them the biggest biggest boost in sales? Yeah. Though? If like, if if better sales software, are is the games. goal, like like you know, if you think about the thing, mm -hmm. the thing that I think made, having a cheaper model out there might actually you know. Yeah. Like, if you've got people that are price like sensitive, bucks. like cutting the price definitely. Yeah. This is yeah, that's still not three DS territory. Yeah. Like you know, the three DS is in the hundred dollar range now for 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 the lower mm -hmm. end models. Yeah. Yes. For the low. Yeah. Like there there is a segment of people buying game systems for their kids that don't want to blow three hundred dollars on something that they might drop and break. Right. Yeah. So then it becomes like, okay, you know, maybe they go to a better screen if they can just get a better deal on those screens. But if it's more about like, hey, can we make this thing more cheaply Cheaper. and, you know, cut 50 bucks off it or, you know, a hundred, you know, yeah. who, who knows? And of course, like speculation is running wild now. Like, oh, are they going to step up to the NVIDIA Tigra X2 because they had the right. X1 in the original Switch and that was kind of outdated to begin with. And like, is that going to make... I think doing that this soon in the cycle, like, like a crazy. hardware upgrade, yeah, like but... an actual like performance enhancing upgrade, I think would be really fucked up. Yeah. I don't know uh, what the difference in performance actually is. It might not be a huge thing. Uh, anything that's going to lead, because if you think about how they handled the new 3DS stuff where that had like a, a better, you know, better internals, you know, higher clock yeah. speed. You like know, a, like the, a lot faster. Yeah. Um, and they did next to nothing They did next to it. nothing with it because, yeah. you know, they couldn't really split the user base or, you, you know, had like a handful of games. Like, was yeah. it like Minecraft only plays on a new? Yeah. And, and, like, and it was like Hyrule Warriors had a lot like better ran frame better. rate. You definitely had games that ran better yeah. on the new 3DS. And there were a couple of eShop games that only ran on the new one. Yeah. 
But, uh, and they did the same thing with the DS. You know, the DSi came out and had better hardware in it, and they did the same thing. Like, they put out almost nothing yeah. that took advantage of it. So, I, I, don't, I don't think they've been good at exploiting, like, mid-cycle hardware improvements. So, yeah. I, I just don't think that's, like, a good thing to do. Yeah. Unless this turns uh, into, like, a PS4 Pro situation of just, like, oh, Zelda runs a little smoother on the new one. It's not something that you would really sure. notice, but it's there, you know. Maybe, yeah. maybe it just enhances every game a little I bit. Guess. I don't. Who knows? I have no idea. This is a weird story. But like you know, the the bulk of the games coming out on the Switch right now. Do they need the power? You know, it's a lot of. Yeah, probably not. Smaller games. Just, and, I don't. Know, stuff yeah. that, that yeah, runs they've been going well, really hard you know? in the indie's direction yeah, lately. Yeah. So, so like a lot of those indie games, you know, well, whatever. Every, everything benefits from power. It's, you know, you know, like Dead Cells didn't even run great. So yeah. if they can beef it up to to kind of blow past some of those issues, maybe that helps. But. Uh, I, I to me, I just I for me like when you, that bit about hey the sales were a big surprise out of the gate like to me the number one thing is still like it just, just doesn't seem like they have those big games anymore. Uh, or, I mean, the or first year was or lined up, right? Yeah, and, like they, and they killed it the first year, and, and, and now then... we're getting into the other stuff that's like not necessarily as much of the mainstream appeal, I guess. Yeah, yeah. there's no Mario in the pipeline. There's no yeah. Zelda in the pipeline. Well, you know, it could be well, the start of the pipeline, but well, but I mean, like announced. Yeah, nothing announced. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Metroid has always been, you know, like it or not, kind of a niche thing. Yeah, and po- well, Pokemon is still Pokemon's in the pipe, huge, but. Yeah. We'll right, see, we'll see. Yeah, there's like, just not enough info it, it, out about that's, that one. That's right not now. me saying that like Smash Brothers is small or whatever, but it's just it's not. Hey, the Legend of Zelda came out. You know, yeah. it's not that. Like New and, Zelda and New Mario are, uh, are things that'll get people who don't play games much anymore to I, come around. The the that report though that came out mm, a few months ago, the the sales numbers. Smash was always in like the top mm. five of each console. Right, but that's fair. I guess the thing I would say is I think a lot of the people that wanted Smash bought one, like, you know, maybe already bought a Switch. So I, I wonder, like, if, if when Smash comes out, are you going to see a surge of people buying Switches? I think so. Yeah. I, I, I know enough people that like Smash Brothers, and it's like, oh, that, I mean, like, it's... I, I feel like a lot of people approach Nintendo consoles in a way where it's like, you just wait for that critical mass of like, okay, there's finally whatever your number is, like four big games. Yeah, it's sure. Like the Mario, the Zelda, and then like whatever smaller ones you yeah, care about. That has been like the last three Nintendo consoles. <laughs> and I feel like Smash is big enough now that it's one of those like big number games. But I guess like how many people, yeah, and, and yeah, sure. There, there are some people that, you know, are, are big Smash players that are going to wait for that game and all that other stuff. But, you know, the larger millions that, that make Smash this huge thing probably also love Mario and Zelda and maybe already picked one up. Maybe. Uh, At that point, I feel like it's really just a price thing. Sure. I really yeah. think that 300 is just kind of a lot for mm-hmm. what some people want to pay for something like that, especially if they look at it as a handheld. If they're looking at it as a handheld, then yeah, I think that's that's maybe it. But whatever, man. Like, iPads are fucking expensive. Yeah. They're crazy. Yeah, but they're different Android tablets are way less expensive. Way different like, expectations. Still in, the in that same stuff. ballpark. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just I, I don't see a clear path of like here's a, a meaningful upgrade that doesn't alienate people that already bought a switch. Yeah, that's the big one to me. Uh, like it feels like that thing just came out. I know it's been a year and a half, but like I look at it and go like, oh, they should put a proper D pad on the default Joy Cons, mm-hmm. you know, because that thing doesn't feel great. Or, Hori or Hori just put one out that has a a D pad on it, mm-hmm. but it doesn't do wireless. It only works bolted onto the switch. Oh, really? What is that? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I agree with you. I wish I really wish Nintendo would just make an official Joy-Con with a D-pad. I'm kind of shocked that they don't, as just a, as a as an add-on, right? If not in the box. And there's some stuff they could do, like if they redesign Joy-Cons, maybe they could find a way to make the the shoulder buttons feel the the when you're just holding the Joy-Con, those buttons feel better without the rail having to be mm-hmm. slid on or yeah. something. You know? What if the box that the Switch Two comes in is also a Labo? Shit. What it, you set the the Joy Cons on the box and then you tap the box. Did I ever tell you that Let's Tap is the first video game I ever reviewed? <laughs> no, I think I played most of it. Did you give it the highest score possible? <laughs> I think I gave it like an eight. Yeah, um, I played most of it laying down on my back on a couch. That with, sounds great. With the box that it came in on my stomach and then the Wiimote on that, looking at the TV and then just like. Tapping yeah. it on my yeah. body. <laughs> that game was fun. That game's fun. 
It's real dumb. Yeah. <laughs> this was a weird one. I mean, it's, you it's just hard knew, to know you, what the well, you knew yeah, they were going to do something. Of course, of course, something like this would happen. Yeah. And there's the Eventually. talk. Like, I don't know if they're out there already. That they had to do a hardware revision to try to plug up the security oh, that, hole yeah. they had. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if those are out there or not. Yeah, I don't know either. I, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like the like the Elysium keylogger. That's one of those things that people just sort of <laughs> seem to talk about and know, right. yeah, without any real evidence. Um, maybe it's out there by now. Yeah, of people taking them apart and going, nope, these are the new ones. I, I don't. I'm not sure. I don't. I have not followed that stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know. To me, it feels like there are two ways this could go. It could either be like a branded new switch, you know, like they yeah. presented at here's here's a new model. It has X Y Z new features. It is the new model of this thing, right? Or they just slide in this streamlined model at a say two fifty or maybe even two hundred level. Sort of like price. a new three DS. Yeah, thing yeah. It's, it's just like, like we're quietly new, drop. We're dropping. Hey, hey, we're dropping the price. Also, here this is how we did it by cutting some corners or you know whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't I, know which it's going to be. I want to say that there have been some screen changes to 3DSs that didn't necessarily get announced or noticed, per huh. se, of just like, oh, I got a, I got a 3DS and the top screen's a TN panel. And the yes, bottom I have absolutely IPS seen a bunch like, of stuff like that. Like that sort of stuff where, yes. you know, the, the parts are getting sourced from different locations yeah. and, and all that. So there's definitely precedent for like, hey, you know, these things are technically in the same product family, same time frame, but, but they might one, be slightly different. This one is way better because the part is better or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, so maybe it ends up being something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of directions it could go. It's it's just it's too too hard to know right now. Yeah. I, I I can't even speculate like what because because for me I look at it and go like man I I, st- I wish that they would have more big switch games as much as I'm like fucking all the way ready for Animal Crossing and that sort of stuff like I still look at the lineup and go like ah it's the doesn't feel like it did pre-launch, right? When yeah. they were like, yo, we got Mario and Zelda. You're like, that's fucking stupid. It's what are you <laughs> even doing? And you think like, well, if they're putting these out, then you know they got some big gun. And you're like, oh. I, I kind of wondered at the time. Maybe they super don't. Yeah, I kind of wondered at the time. Like, are you, are you guys shooting yourself in the foot a little bit? Yeah. With both of your biggest games in the first, like, eight months? I don't know. But they'll probably be okay. Yeah, I think they'll figure it out. I am very excited about a new Luigi's Mansion. I don't know about anybody else. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I will extremely play another one mm-hmm. of those oh yeah um and i'll buy smash again and <laughs> play it for three hours and go nope still not my game <laughs> i admire you for trying i try every time i'll play with you i'll oh. show i'll show you just show me how bad i am and then i'll be even more frustrated it'd be like that guy at srk <laughs> <laughs> i think you found your main yeah <laughs> fall off the edge for the fourth time <laughs> yeah Nailed it. <laughs> uh, Jason Schreier with all of the scoops this week. He uh, ran that Obsidian thing. He also ran a thing where uh, he talked to how many? Three oh. people at three different game studios uh, who have all told him that Sony is providing documentation to developers preparing for the PlayStation Network name change. Fuck, PSX is actually going to happen now. <laughs> <laughs> It's back on. Same day as x yeah, It's just, it's just, it's just going to be a Periscope in Sean Layden's office just being like, hey, you can change your name now. Thanks for joining happy. us. Happy. See you next year. Um, that would probably be enough for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, he, he says he has seen a photo of some of that documentation that shows a PlayStation Network profile page with an edit username option. I feel like we heard last year about there were fields on like the back end mm. uh, that, that were making their way into like Unreal yeah, Engine Unreal, stuff. Yeah, Unreal, some of that stuff worked its way in there. It looked sure. like it had to do with PSN name changes, but uh, but that... Some of the only talks about... I don't know. Have there ever been credible rumors about like, is this a one time? You get Everyone gets one? Is this like you pay five bucks? Oh, yeah. That, I don't on. think they've talked at all about yeah. how it will work. I imagine... In, in my head, they just match what Microsoft has done and which say is, which is you pay to one, change it i think you get you get one free uh, change and then it's like according to this it's like eight bucks i i wouldn't be surprised afterwards. if there was one free just because this is something that has been one of their biggest oh absolutely like, requests yeah. if sure. <laughs> yeah. dude if they made people wait this long and then charge you to do it people are not gonna be pleased i bet i could i could see it being uh, one free one for yeah. playstation plus members sure uh, yeah i buy that yeah i could see that sure um Let's see. Here's a quote from the story. We don't have uh, any sort of time frame for the feature yet. Uh, and these developers have suggested that as a result of how PSN IDs were originally implemented, 
that is linking your account ID to your username rather than some sort of universally unique identifier, retroactively fixing old multiplayer games might be a time-consuming and difficult prospect. Yeah, when you... Yes. When you get back onto the Vita and you get back onto the PS3, um, that gets way harder. It's yeah. a, the, the solution I wondered about when we first started talking about this, fucking, I don't know, two years, however long it's been. A while. Uh, was that maybe the solution would have to be something really, like... Like hacky? Hacky, like where, like, you can change your... another account. You can link. change your PS4 username, right. but your... You're locked on those You're old platforms. All, you will always be known as your original name on PS3 or Vita. That's my guess yeah. is how this will actually end up I mean, working. I, I, I would take that any um, day over like a few of the games on those platforms getting updates and everything else just like breaking the multiplayer yeah. or whatever. Like they can't do that. So I would much rather just have it stick on the old platforms. Yeah, I, I wonder. Uh, maybe, they, maybe, maybe the reason this is taking so long is because they're trying to find ways around all of that stuff too. Mm -hmm. uh, and that sounds like a hard, That sounds like a lot of work. A lot of work. Um, I, just, <laughs> I imagine somebody at Sony on the PSN team is just like furious every single day at whatever decision got made casually. Like, what? When was that? Like 13 years ago? Something like that. Yeah. Or something? When? Well, did PSN exist on PS2? No. That was all like, no, that, that was, was a custom. Separate, yeah, yeah. Like every game had its own online thing, right? right. Uh, whoever decided to architect this thing in this way. Mm-hmm. Like 12 years that's and all, change that's ago. That's all of tech, well, though, I know. right? Like, that's, you know, I'm sure Xbox Live went through that same stuff going from original Xbox to 360 and, sure. you know, any kind of transition like that. Someone's mad yeah. about some decision from years or ago. It's just, just making some engineering team's life hell. I mean, fuck, we're in the middle of redesigning the site and there are things on the site that I'm mad that yeah. were decisions I made sure. fucking nine years ago. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Everything changes on the internet. It's never uh, a very clean process. Anyway, maybe soon. Um, you guys gonna change your names? Oh, yeah, 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 one hundred percent. Okay, yeah, zero percent, zero percent. I got what I wanted. I'm gonna stick with it. Same. Um, yeah, yours is good. No numbers on the end or anything. Nope. Like you picked something no unique. Yep. Mine's gonna be just what mine is, but I'm adding numbers to the end of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Talking. Maybe some X's and O's. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It'd be nice if they rolled out, and I doubt they would ever do this but it'd be nice if they rolled out the ability to merge psn profiles yeah because sure you know some people have certainly built up multiple over the years yeah like sure. i've got one that yeah. i dropped in 07 that had a bunch of ps3 purchases on it and mm. not a ton because it was still relatively early i guess in in that stuff but mm -hmm. um it'd be nice to just unify all that shit yeah i could see that i'm gonna change mine to ninja whoa yeah i like it um i wonder if they'll eventually like like unlock a bunch of used PSN names because that's their namespace has got to be really cluttered by now yeah. of people that just aren't using those accounts. And a bunch will get freed up if people start changing them, presumably. Unless they have to remain the same on oh, PS3, right. then so you, you are can't. technically taking up two names Yikes. and like that. Well, I, I really want to see what this implementation looks like because yeah. it, it seems like the sort of thing that could be really messy or could be re like really amazing. Yeah. Or and by really amazing, I mean like it, it actually works, works the like way you should. want it to work. Yeah. Elegant. Which on the back end sounds like it would be really fucking hard to do. Yeah. So we shall see. I hope it's not just a like a display name change like Steam does it, where mm. you can just kind of change it whenever, but you right. still have your one main account name. Yeah. Like I want my name to be gone. Like I'd, I'd I'd prefer it not like live in even so just like no nope, wipe it yeah moving on. Uh, in other news, uh, as of right now, mm -hmm. uh, The Walking Dead the final season is going to be finished. Uh, Skybound Games, which is the game company founded by Robert Kirkman, the he's, creator of The Walking Dead, he's got some ties to The Walking Dead. Yeah, uh, has come in and made a deal with Telltale Games to finish that season. They say they are. They don't sound 100% sure, but they are attempting to get the same people who were making it before to make it now. Okay. Well, that uh, seems like that seems like, like the important uh, part. Bringing those people on to Skybound or uh they don't go they don't get into like yeah, they okay. don't get into what the employment situation would I be. I wonder. 
Um, because like they what? laid off the rest of the people at Telltale. Oh yeah, that's so that's a, that's another Telltale related story. Is that yeah? The, remember they were keeping a skeleton crew around. Yeah, yeah. gone. We don't know about how many because I I think this came I out of say tweets. Twenty five ish. No, no. I mean, yeah, there it was about twenty five, but but uh, some number of those people have also now been laid off as of last week. Okay. But we don't know how many. Is, is what? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because at least one person on that remaining small team tweeted like, "Hey, remember how so a few of us got to keep our jobs? Like, just kidding. I just got laid off too." What's happening? Um, so a lot of that work got done. There was tech. There's work. There's yeah. a, there's an existing thing that you can buy. Uh -huh. Skybound bought it. They want to, or at least publicly, say they want to do the right thing and try to have the people that were making it come in and make it. Once, once that thing sells to Skybound, then it's clear that like Telltale is not going to be developing it. Yeah. And I, I don't know if this is how it worked. In my head, this is how it worked. Then you lay off that team because you're like, okay, well, you know, we're no longer developing this, so we're mm -hmm. broke anyway, so we're laying off this team. And then everyone is kind of in the wind at that point, and it's up to Skybound to try to build a team. Yeah, because they're doing more publishing than anything, but but I think they do have a team like working on some mobile okay. work, Walking Dead stuff. Yeah, maybe the team gets transitioned into that team. There's or a zero percent chance this works out. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're probably right. You're probably right. It's just a mess. So then at that point, like, like what is you're, at that point, you're for? out there saying like, hey, we want to put this game. We'd love to, to put this team back together. But like some of this team is like, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, out, I'm out here looking for work. I'm already interviewing team. for a new job. Yeah. Already, like, like once a team gets cut loose yeah. like that, they're like out there looking that's, yeah. You know how you spent the last like two weeks drinking and complaining about your old job? What if you could have it back? But with different management. I mean, at that yeah. point, though, at least it's like. Yeah, different weird management who didn't really know what the process and, was and, at your old job. But like maybe that would just their own totally. preconceptions. And maybe that, would just be, be maybe that would just be a contract gig. It's just like, yeah. hey, we're looking oh, to pay I, some people I to bet. come in and finish this up. It's not an, We're not looking to build a, an ongoing team here. Maybe. If this goes well, maybe we build it into a team. And that could be I, nice I for people who are having a lot of trouble finding a new job, sure. yeah, like yeah. who don't have any prospects or whatever, but like I, yeah, I, I yeah. This whole thing. This whole thing. <laughs> and like another game uh, that was supposed to be published by Telltale on consoles like today, yesterday, like alt is not showing up. Really? Um yeah. so I forget, I forget, like, the, I forget were, the name of the game, but yeah. they, they had a release date of like, like today they were on track or, yeah. to to release, yeah. Similar to that RGX showdown that yeah, which we that played, squeaked out, but like three days, yeah. two three days before the layoffs happened. Uh, this other game, uh, let me say, it starts with a D. Um, Rug pulled out from under. I'm trying sure. to see if I can find out what the name of that game is. Uh, it's oh. yeah. So I I don't I don't know. I don't even know enough about this to tell you what Skybound. Yeah, you said they did some mobile stuff. Yeah, like I don't know, but, but also like, did they? Like, what's the the long lasting thing there? Of like, did did they buy the Telltale tech? Probably not. They probably just bought the rights to use it for to finish up this season. Yeah, and it's the final season anyway. So Skybound's not going to be like, all right, more walking. You know, the second final season. I, I don't. <clears throat> do yeah, you, this, do you bring this... that crew together and try to do a new Walking Dead no. series? Oh, I highly doubt it. With different tech, from the sound of. So I got this story off Variety. Uh, sounds like Robert Kirkman himself announced this stuff on Saturday. Uh, and most of the quotes, most of the quotes make it sound like, here, I'll, I'll read this. Uh, We've successfully negotiated with Telltale Games for our company Skybound to come in and see season four of the Telltale Game to completion. He said this at New York Comic Con. We can't lose Andrew Lincoln and Clementine in the same year. I don't know if is Andrew Lincoln, is that the actor that just passed away a week or two ago from the show? Oh, I think so. I'm maybe. guessing. I'm guessing who is who he's talking about there. Sure. I don't know but, that I'd put Clementine on the same level as that. But as hey. that human being, yeah, yeah, that's fair. I don't know. I, I may be wrong. I assume that's who he's. talking about. I think about. you're right. But uh, anyway, I, I I mentioned that because it makes it sound like they're kind of their primary focus is like we want this story to be finished. Like we we don't want to leave this story thread hanging. Um, For the fans. Who weren't, who weren't buying The Walking yeah, Dead anymore them, yeah. anyway. Like at the top of the Variety story, it says, Skybound also hopes to keep the original Telltale development team intact so they can be the ones to finish the season, but I don't see any really direct quotes in that vein from anybody involved in the deal here. And that's like mm -hmm. a, you know, yeah, you'd love to have the people that knew what they were doing with this tech to come yeah. in and, and finish the thing, yeah. obviously. Sure. Uh, but But again, like... 
it's not like the team was still employed at Telltale and they said, oh, and we want to transfer you over right. here and try to make this happen. Right. As a group, we want to bring you over. It was more like, ah, uh, yeah. everyone's in the wind with no severance, yeah. scrambling. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah. Continues to be a mess. Sadly. Um, Mike Morheim has announced that he is stepping down from Blizzard after 27 years. What's Pretty he got wild. going on now? Uh, probably enjoying a very comfortable retired life. More than likely. I'm guessing. What was his role there? I mean, he was the head of Blizzard oh, okay. for a very long time. Uh, he was there more or less at the founding before it was even called Blizzard. I don't know if he was a founder. I don't think that's right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Also, Blizzard's history is super weird because they've changed corporate ownership like five times, I think, or something. I think they originally got acquired in the 90s. Yeah. Because Sierra, like, no. Right before it, that. Yeah. Uh, or Vivendi. Or, well, they, they're part it was of before, that it was thing, even right? before all that stuff. Okay. Because they used to be called Silicon and Synapse. Yeah. And they got bought by some, like, kind of smallish company, like, when they were not. Yeah, they were bought by Davidson and Associates. Oh, yeah. Initially. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, weird history. Anyway, Morheim has been there for, for effing ever. Like, you know, people just very closely identify him with the culture of Blizzard. Right. And the way they have done things. Oh, he's a huge nerd. Sure. I mean, <laughs> have you seen that guy? <laughs> the shirts that he wears when he gives the keynote. Was he in the band? Was he in the was I can't he part remember. of the band? I don't <laughs> think so. Okay. Let me see. Uh the, ba 11, the, the band is very cool. Level forty elite Torin Chieftain? Sure. <laughs> See, the level number would change as the expansions came out. Whoa. Oh. Okay. Whoa. Oh, it's like most recently they were level 90 elite Torin Chieftain. Good on him. I don't think he was in the band. Okay. I'm sorry, he was in the band. <laughs> <laughs> he was the bassist. Fuck yeah, he was. Okay. What now? Sure. <laughs> sorry, I take back the fact about him being a nerd. He will probably continue to be yeah. in the band. I don't know. Willie play like his own retirement you party. Don't get to, you don't get to leave Blizzard right. and stay in the band, right? right? Dude, really? the band is more important than the fucking company, man. Of course you is want he, to... Maybe he's quitting to focus on the band. <laughs> he's like, what if we branched out and wrote songs that were not <laughs> about like... World of Warcraft? And they were like, <laughs> get out! <laughs> what if we went full-time on this band? We could really be something. Yeah. Um... J. Allen Brack, who has been running World of Warcraft for most of its existence, is uh, stepping up to take over for him as the head of Blizzard. I understand that is a very popular video game. Uh, yes. He sounds like he could be equipped to run that company. And as are many of their games. These days, it sounds like people are somewhat frustrated with it. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. But hey, any game that's made it this long and people still have a passion for it. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Good they're, on you. They're, they're doing something right, for sure. Uh, something else that's like a weird footnote in here is that Alan Adam, who is actually is the founder of Blizzard from yeah. way back when is still at the company, yeah. but was not on the executive team, mm -hmm. but will be now. Maybe like he didn't want to be. He's yeah, like, like, fuck he it, made, I want to make, I want to work for a living. Yeah. Like maybe he was actually like just hands on with making games, but he is now stepping up into the management. Um, anyway. Yeah. I don't know if, you know, who knows what this will change if anything. I was playing some Overwatch over the weekend and they have, you know, there's those little starting areas are all kind of customized. And yeah. There's a new map, uh, Busan, and it's a lot, like, a lot of, like there's a working DDR machine. Like you can step, you step That's on cool. the arrows, okay. and then there's a there's a there's a room that has a projection of. They've had the little like arcade fighting looking fighting game in there with like yeah. Rainer and Kerrigan or something. Yeah, um, but it's like much bigger and projected from like a little projector, and it looks really nice. It looks like it looks fucking really good. And it just made me think about how cool and polished a blizzard fighting game would be. Right. <sighs> they should put blizzard characters into a fighting game. Yeah. It would be, it'd be a blizzard like, cross like imagine the riots. cinematics. Sure. I could like how good oh, their yeah, moderns yeah. right with, with all the overwatch stuff. And oh, things I don't want them to be good. I want them <laughs> to be like goofy and great. They can be goofy and great yeah. and good. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. I'd rather they invest the money in watching the Tekken endings over and over again and go, oh, they need to be like this. <laughs> Just like characters yeah. moving like this. Right. Oh, geez. Um, I've been playing Samurai Shodown 5, and those are some of the best endings. Really? Yeah. I checked hmm. those out. We're going to, yeah. We need to show those off. 
Uh, in other Blizzard news, um, they put out the schedule for uh, BlizzCon, which is, I believe, the 2nd of November is when that's starting. Uh, and a bunch of blogs. Oh, shit. That's Extra Life weekend. Oh, wow. Jeez, that's a lot. Uh, a bunch of blogs picked up on the schedule that uh, the first panel directly after the keynote is a panel called Diablo What's Next. Huh. Another so, one. Next. Yeah. So now the thought is that a new Diablo will potentially get announced at BlizzCon. This will also or be like more of. the day that Diablo Switch comes out. Oh, is that? Oh, so they, they're able to be on stage like, and hey, it's, it's available now. Yeah. What uh, were the two? There was two Diablo rumors. One was Switch. What was the other one? Oh, yeah. There was some rumor that like multiple Diablo projects were in production or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I looked at the full schedule after this news started making the rounds, and then I noticed that every panel they have is like game name, what's next? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know if there's a lot to read from that, but... Probably not. Um, right. It is directly after the keynote. Uh, and, you know, it's some of these new stories point out that like other... like. Typically, if a new thing gets announced there, that will be the first panel. So there mm-hmm. may very well be a Diablo announcement forthcoming. I imagine they'll do one last, like, here's our big last Diablo 3 thing. Oh, I don't know. It's been so long. Well, I mean, they put out that new character last year. Uh, was it last year? Was was it two years the ago. The Necromancer? It was last yeah, year. The Necromancer. Was that was a pretty small. Yeah, they only did the one big named expansion and then that small Necromancer thing. Yeah, that's all they've ever put out for this game that sold like 35 million copies. Uh, yeah, so I wonder like if if this ends up being something that is an add-on for Diablo three, right. and it just took them a long time to ramp up on it and get going, or if they weren't planning on doing it, like launch yeah. at the same time with the Switch version or something. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know. They, they actually they do go really long uh, time between Diablo projects, right? They so, have, yeah, they have, but, in the but past, they don't like, necessarily. Yeah, but doesn't mean they have to stick to that. Yeah, but it was something like what. 10, 12 years between two and three. Right. A lot happened in that time, though. Yeah. You know, in terms of just like Blizzard, corporate well, yeah. you know, like, sure. like a lot, a lot yeah. happened. World of Warcraft so, exploded and yeah. stuff like that. that. That would have given them a reason to not necessarily go back and focus on Diablo, but now yeah. they can just like, oh, well, we have enough money coming through the door that we can just have teams for all of them and yeah. keep yeah. them all going. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm kind of getting excited for BlizzCon because God help me, I appear to be getting back into StarCraft. You watch? I have too. Mm. Wait, really? You watch the? Uh... I have been. I last two weekends, I have watched a surprising amount of GSL. <laughs> yeah, the the, uh, the super tournament. The uh, Faker and uh, or not Faker? Uh, Sla- slash. Slash. No. Slash is playing StarCraft. Yeah, and I bet his APM must be fucking insane. Yeah, he's, uh, he's like he he plays like a jazz scale though. It's really it's a weird opener. Yeah, yeah, he has to kind of set his his keys uh, pretty weird. Yeah, to to get it there. Uh, drop. Yeah, I heard so that it, Matt Sorum was trying to get into it, but not finding nearly as yeah. much success. I was on Africa TV yes. watching the ASL uh, top 16. I feel like every time I've ended up on Africa.tv, it was to try to find good videos of people eating. Is that just like a, <laughs> it's a general streaming, streaming platform? And... You know what I'll say about Africa.tv? The chat, I was watching a replay, so it was the replay of the chat. Incredibly civilized wow. and like just people who love StarCraft like talking about the games. Huh. Like... Do you know where that's based? Is that in Korea or is it? I think, I think so. so. It's weird because I was watching, I've been watching GSL on their Twitch channel, but they're still an Africa.tv logo <laughs> on stuff mm. for some reason. Uh but yeah, it's been a good reminder that StarCraft 2 is still my favorite esport, favorite like spectator game. Really? By a mile. Yeah, absolutely. So what if they I think I might actually watch all that stuff at BlizzCon this year. What if they put out StarCraft Ghost? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, they're not gonna just... put out a single player focused thing anymore. But like for free. <laughs> 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 they're just like download this GameCube ISO. It's the only okay. code that was far enough along. Sure. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, just like Let's that Saints it. Row PSP game that they just oh, put out. Right. Right. That's I don't right. Know. What did that run on? PSP. Dish. What? They just you downloaded know, it as a I mean, hey, or a, a, a or a PC pretending to be a PSP. Mm, sure. You know, there okay. are multiple ways. Was to, that sure. th- that sniper minigame or was that something? That else? was Xbox Live Arcade. Uh and I that, that yeah, that never came out either. No. It was not good. I think one of my first days as an intern, I watched you guys play in that and yeah. like this isn't good. Yeah, it was supposed to be a pre order bonus or something, I think. Something like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Unfortunately, I you know we had that build of that game and don't have it anymore because the hard drive of that debug got formatted or oh, red ringed or something like that. Like the the number of games we have lost 
unreleased. You just like said that WWE WrestleFest thing. Uh, someone was making an RBI baseball before MLB picked it up that didn't look like the, the I imagine that never got announced. Right. You just said red wing, red ring, and it was the first time I've thought about that in years, and it sent a fucking shiver down my spine, yeah. and it made me kind of appreciate how this console cycle hasn't had anything nearly that yeah. bad. Yeah, it's yeah. nice when shit works. Yeah, <laughs> went through three three sixties before I got one that lived. I had one, and I did the towel trick, and it actually worked, and it carried me through to the next generation. Wow, jeez, yeah. I always thought that was just like a stop gap that would buy you like a month or something. Yeah. It bought me like six months. It was towards the end oh, okay. of, the, of the cycle. Huh. But... Was that on like a, an original model? Not the... Yes, but I hadn't... I got it from somebody who like had it forever and just never used it. Ah. So it like didn't see any action towards... Okay. The... Um, last thing about BlizzCon, did you guys see that... Uh, you know they do that virtual ticket every year? Like you actually pay. Right. And I don't know yeah. if they're still affiliated with DirecTV or not or if it's all just... I don't know. I, yeah. I would guess it's all just streamed online at this point, but... I know um, they're loaded up with like skin bonuses and games. Yeah, they would... Yeah, yeah so this I year... I a nice skin bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but they are putting out a playable demo of World of Warcraft Classic oh, for oh, holders cool. holders of that virtual ticket, which is going to be playable for like <laughs> putting out this. That's demo fucking dumb. Of a, it's a weird thing. <laughs> like the, of number a that, oh. the number of levels to that. The number of levels to like. Okay, if you buy this pass <laughs> to watch this stream of stuff that is more or less ads for our games. We will allow you to play a demo of a re-released version of. Yeah, all right. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Skin bonus. Uh, <laughs> apparently, it's the same build as people are going to be playing on the BlizzCon floor. Hmm. I I just think it's cool when yeah, no, it's just like yeah. in there when companies do that. Uh, that's a neat thing. Yeah, I kind of want to try that. Um, some footage has emerged. Purporting to be that rumored uh, Harry Potter RPG that Avalanche Ooh, Software yeah. is working on. Wow. Uh, did y'all manage to see that? I did. Yes. I saw it the day it leaked, and then I haven't been able to find it since, because obviously Warner Brothers copyright claimed everything that got posted, which, mm -hmm. not that it looked fake to begin with, but obviously that makes it seem pretty legit if Describe they're going after it. it to me. It looked... So the treatment, uh, it came out of a person who said they got pulled into a mall focus group and paid to look at the game. Okay. And that... Y'all like video games? Yeah. Sure. Coming on. You want to make a hundred bucks? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the, the person, it was some... <laughs> a user on Reddit by the name of Vape This Bro. Uh, I met that guy at a party. Uh, say... I hope this, he gets his PSN username. It's the, person, yeah. it's the person who posted this footage. They say that the footage is leaked. Leaked as in, I went into a room for a focus group, took a sneak video, and uploaded it. This isn't some marketing ploy. If you notice the bottom right corner of the video, it's censored because it has a serial number identifying me so Warner Brothers can sue the ever-living shit out of me. It was one of those mall survey groups. I wasn't allowed to have the camera. The signs in the lobby say no phones, but no one checked me. The guys who did all the paperwork looked like they gave zero fucks about their jobs and were getting anyone and everyone who would do the viewing to do it. I got paid to watch it. Um, Vape this a bro, true hero. hero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Someone had to take the risk. The news had to get out. It's too hot for him to sit on it. He had to get it out there. So he. The people need to know about a hybrid. Had to take my life into my own hands and make sure that you got to see this Harry Potter RPG footage. Uh, so this. Uh... I like the blueberry juice. It vapes the best. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I just replaced my coil. Try that cotton candy yet? Hell no, that shit's for kids. J.K. Rowling's gonna retcon it and turn Ron into a vape fiend. Y'all like y'all like Harry Potter? I heard some interest. I like Harry Potter. Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm not alone here. Um, all right. I'll, so he kind of transcribed some of the marketing material he got his hands on. So this could hopefully be accurate. <laughs> there was these wizards and they got walls. <laughs> There's a school you go to to be a better wizard. <laughs> oh. I'm like, what the fuck? All right. It says set in Wait, the... you learn a spell? Ron Weasel was there. Whoa. <laughs> Ron Weasel. I went through the process and they said I'm a Hubble pimp. <laughs> All right. Set in the 19th century wizarding world, this third person open world action RPG centers around your character with unique abilities who has earned a late acceptance to Hogwarts. Finally got my letter. 
It's like 35. <laughs> Upon arrival, strange events begin to materialize in the Forbidden Forest, and trouble begins to brew within the castle walls. <gasps> Uh, I hope nearly headless Nick's not involved. Blah, blah, blah. Journey through both familiar and never-before-seen locations. Craft potions, master new spells, and discover fantastical beasts, battle dark wizards, goblins, and other supernatural enemies. Dark beasts, goblins, and other supernatural enemies. Yeah. It's a weird trio. Whoa. Like, I'm picturing, you know, hellhounds, and then this little, like, hey, ah, I'm going to stab your leg. Ah. So there's kind of a list of bullet points that actually gives you an idea of what the game probably is. Uh, it says, journey to Hogwarts to become one of eight different wizard types. So I guess it's like a class-based thing. Uh, experience Hogwarts, make new friends, uncover new secrets, and change the fate of the wizarding world. Uh, this sounds kind of interesting. Experience a new magic system that creates countless possibilities to master magic. I wonder if that's like a, or if that's taking any cues from like the Magicka games where you can like combine spells oh, or right, like, what was sure. that? Um, oh yeah. Uh, nine, nine, parchments. nine parchments that you did a quick look of. Yeah. another game where basically just mash up different spell types. Yeah, you to probably get... got like different r r words and roots yeah. words. That yeah, you that, that, that kind of could be cool. Yeah. Uh, freely explore the wizarding, wizarding world for the first time. Choose your house and friends at Hogwarts. You, you, can't, you can't. No, your house your chooses house. you. I don't know what the you sorting mean. hat. This is a bull well, crap. I mean, actually, the, the sorting hat was going to put Harry in. Because that's what he really wanted deep in, down. He, that, that's, what he, that's what the hat mm. saw, okay? Uh, I bet it's I bet it's the straight up. So I, I mean, I'll say like this, this sounds like the Bioware treatment for yeah. a Harry Potter type of game. It's gonna be just that Pottermore quiz <laughs> done. <laughs> like I bet it's totally just your like Mass Effect origin, right? Yeah. It's like oh, oh yeah. born in space on a freighter, or like you know, combat survivor from Earth. Like you just pick a story. your dad's a Muggle, right? <laughs> oh no. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It it sounds like a yeah, Bioware Bethesda ish kind of thing. Oh man, I could pick an owl or a cat or a frog as my yeah. pet. Oh yes. You, could, the... prob you could probably play Quidditch. I bet yes. you can. Ah man, oh, Quidditch. Man. A Quidditch. whole side quest, man, a Quidditch whole quest the, line. Quidditch is the lamest part of Harry Potter. What? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the snitch I mean, it looks cool. fine. It's okay, but it's just Blitzball, isn't it? Well, <laughs> pretty much. All right. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't thought a lot about Blitzball since 2001. Weird. Why not? <laughs> I just didn't find it that interesting. I don't oh, know. Huh. Didn't really seem worth revisiting. Nobody, nobody in your home <laughs> replaying nope. it. Nope. Um, I saw Jeff. Quidditch League over the weekend, actually, in Golden Gate Park. Wait, ah, dude, that My real life, that real life wow. Quidditch stuff is just. It's, that ain't even. It's not real Quidditch. They're not even all. flying. <laughs> <laughs> you call that Quidditch? They had brooms. It was, it was weird. Were Wait, they actively really? like beating each other up with clubs <laughs> like the two people on each team are supposed to do? Wait, you know what? I actually, Quidditch is pretty cool. Because <laughs> that was my biggest problem. Not that they aren't flying, but in the books, it's fucking brutal. Like yeah. People are just getting knocked off their brooms by dudes with big clubs and that, shit. That is, like, that is a thing I forget about that series a lot is that they can just heal each other through magic. So they just get <laughs> fucked up constantly. It's just yeah. like, oh, he just showed up with five broken limbs. Like Harry legit, I think it like the third or fourth book breaks every bone in his body when he yeah. falls off his broom. And they're like, oh, it's going to take you like eh, six hours to recover. Yeah. Uh, did y'all think that footage looked kind of third person shooter-ish? Like it looked, over it looked the, like a whole like, lot of like shooting mm -hmm. things with a wand and kind of a... yeah. Wasn't that wasn't an EA Harry Potter game that was yeah, practically they, Gears of War? Yeah, oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. You might be right. I can't remember. It was like cover based. Yeah. Yeah. And there was it was just like levels, like you know, corridors you would go down. It's just weird thinking of a bunch of kids just whipping their hands back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Did, was it a connect game? There was no. there was a connect game. There was a connect. Was that a separate L thing? There was some sort or of. It was just based element. on one of the movies, and yeah, yeah, it was a cover based shooter essentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I forget the name of it, but I thought this footage looked really good. Yeah, really, it looked really, neat. Totally, yeah. really nice environment. Really polished. Design. Yeah, and I feel like hasn't this been rumored like forever? I think that Avalanche was so, doing something like yeah. this. Um, What's the last thing Avalanche did? Cars three. God, really? Disney Infinity before that. They, yeah. they did like yeah. part of Infinity, right? Were they the core? Yeah, they, they were the core, core studio. Infinity, okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Here's the news that matters. The Quiet Man is coming out on November first. Oh. Shh. Don't. 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 Okay. Yeah. Just. Just. just I'll let you know. It's gonna be fifteen bucks. It's fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Shh. That seems like the right price. It's fifteen. 
Embark on an adrenaline fueled motion picture like experience, which can be completed in one sitting. Might be a little. That's speed. official copy. Yeah. Wait, did you say 15 or 50? 15. 15. That sounds right. They are out there. They are out there pitching that it can be finished in one sitting. I think yeah. the, the, so, the, so Patrick, it's burning it off. Be the, almost right, yeah. Well, so I, I think that is, is supposed to be the sort of thing that you play multiple times yeah, from yeah. different perspectives or, or whatever and kind different of different volumes. Get, yeah. The less quiet man. Yeah. <laughs> That's like three weeks from now. Want to play that thing? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, it very it was it. I can't wait to watch somebody else play it. Playing it at PAX, it's a very bizarre experience yeah. that did not look or feel particularly good. Good, but uh, it sure seemed like a thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's news. <laughs> it had it had something going for it. That it seemed bad in a way that I wanted to see more of, I guess, is what I mean by that. <laughs> by <laughs> Soon you will get your chance. Uh, all right. Y'all good to roll straight into emails? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bombcast at giantbomb.com is where you send the emails. Okay. Uh, here are the ones that got sent, which I pulled from the inbox. Uh, please keep me anonymous. I don't think I agreed to an NDA, but just to be safe. I am the quiet man. They're making a new Harry Potter RPG. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, I bet some or all of you got into this, but I thought I'd forward it along just the same. Actually, I don't think any of us did. He no. So he basically forwarded us his acceptance email to that uh, Google Chrome Assassin's Creed streaming oh, beta. Right. Yep. Um, interesting to me is that we were given 10 bucks and only 10 bucks to spend on microtransactions. For what it's worth, I bought the XP boost since access goes away on January 15th. I thought it was the best way to have the most fun with the game given Sorry. the limited time. I think the streaming is damn good. I don't have hmm. Assassin's Creed Odyssey on any other platform, so it's hard to say it's 100% the best quality, but it looks and plays great. I've had a few hitches in cutscenes, but it catches up fine. Uh, I didn't think that we were there yet on streaming, but I'm a believer now. I'd pay for whatever this service is. Did you mention what he's playing it on? Um, like what kind of device? Chrome. No. I think it has to be I, a I PC. Think it has to be a computer at this point. I don't, I don't think the mobile it stuff yeah, is ready. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It doesn't. I'm, yeah. I'm just wondering, like, how powerful of a machine. Yeah. Um, I guess that doesn't. I don't think it has really to be really just like. Do, are you, do you have fast enough internet? Yeah. Is really the the thing there. Um. So let's see. There, the Google email says: play from any computer, play instantly with just the internet. Stream the game right in your computer's Chrome browser with no installs or downloads. You can hop between computers just by signing into your Google account. So how much um, data is something like that going to eat up? I mean, it's a, it's a video. It's like streaming Netflix, yeah. depending on the bit rate, really. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's this, it would be the same impact as streaming 100 like hours of video, video, you know, depending on how long you didn't play there, it. Didn't right? their announcement last week say, I think this is like 25 megabits okay. or something like that? So that's not nothing, but, yeah. not, but also not gigantic. Yeah. I don't know what Netflix is pushing these days. I don't know. Because I guess my my biggest concern with all this stuff is like data cap. Yeah, that, that right. is definitely a, definitely a yeah. concern. It's a depend, uniquely us mm. problem. Depending on your ISP. Actually, a lot of countries have yeah. have caps. Not all of them, but... Um, Australia, I, yeah. I know, is, mm. is especially bad. Uh, let's see. So yeah, like he said, the, the people that got into this thing just straight up have the game to play until January 15th. Um... So to... just enough to get past the tutorial. Right, yeah, yeah, this this email says after January 15th, you won't be able to access the game anymore or your saved progress and achievements. But until then, play as much as you want. Um, so they're for their like what to do next. It says hop on a computer that has a reliable internet connection. You won't be able to play on a phone or tablet. Use your code to get started. You'll also need a Google account and a recent version of Chrome. Create a Ubisoft account for your game if you don't already have one. This one's a little weird. Plug in your controller or mouse and keyboard and start playing. Try wired USB controllers like DualShock 4 or Xbox One and 360 controllers. Hmm. Like, try these controllers. Maybe they'll yeah. work. I don't know. The wording is a little strange. But hmm. anyway. I mean, they want it, they want you to use official stuff so it reduces the number of like, oh, this thing has terrible input lag. Like, but it's my Gravis like gamepad. Controller. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, just, it's just weird. They don't just flat out say like, hey, these will work if you use them. Like, yeah. just, the wording's kind of ambiguous. Anyway, there's a, there's a little field report from somebody who has tried this. Neat. Oh, let's check it out. Uh, and seems to think it's quite good. I feel like Assassin's Creed is a game that, you know, and, uh, that makes sense for this type of service just because the movement in that game has never been like Super precise, razor sharp precise. Yeah. yeah. Kind yeah. of hold a button and push in a general direction. Yeah, and he'll, he'll eventually start walking. Just yeah. hold it long enough and eventually he'll start to saunter. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, they said they wanted to make it like The Witcher. There you go. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard from anyone who's been because that's out on Switch also in Japan. Oh, uh, that yeah, that yeah, that's that's, a, that's yeah. also a streaming thing. Yep. Uh, but I've not heard uh, one way or the other about that. Yeah. Uh, Rich from Ireland. The lady in Forza Horizon 4 keeps saying, hey, Rich, in this very abrupt way whenever she talks, and it's creeping me out. I didn't even enter my name at the start. Any opinions on this weird trick? I think Fallout did something similar. Seems like a lot of work for a kind of cool, if slightly unsettling effect, when hey there would have done just fine. Hey, rookie. It's got a, so I think if it doesn't know what your name is already. Um, it says rookie. Oh, okay. Does it say? Oh, you're right. You, you're right. You can also set it. Yeah. I think you're right because uh, I played it on a test kit at that event a few yeah. weeks ago, and you're right. It did say, "Hey, rookie." But I wonder um, where it's pulling from. Is it your Xbox yeah. profile or from previous Forza? I saves? think previous because I set it in 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 three. Yeah. And Rise it automatic. Yeah, and yeah. it automatically picked up when I played the Xbox version. When I played the PC version, did. where I didn't play three, um, it just called me rookie. Oh, interesting. Okay, so maybe it is a previous save game thing. Think so. I, I am That's totally guess. I'm totally with this guy. It it kind of freaked me out. Like it was super jarring when it happened. Yeah, having it load up and already know. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh well, I mean my name is in my Xbox profile, so are they surfing that because that's publicly available and just pulling it from that? Mm -hmm. Uh if you like if you didn't play the previous Horizon game, which I think is where I maybe set it, but I wonder if it can just scrape that out of your your name field. I'm not necessarily know. opposed to it. It's just no, kind no. of something. Well, I think anyone you know, anyone, any person that uses your name too much in conversation yeah, comes off weird. as creepy. Yeah, like I just think that's a weird thing to do. I think I've had the game do it like it's like a salesman. Yeah, it's yes. like a, it, it, and it, it is. It, it is straight up a how to win friends and influence yeah. people and kind it, of thing. And, and like I don't trust people that yeah. do it. Yes, absolutely. I, I like it. I imagine like personal assistant type people might do it a lot. I'm just happy somebody this... knows my name. <laughs> yeah, like a Siri, you know, like like voice speaker, like that sort of stuff, definitely. That, that's the context where it's mostly used, I think. It's going to be okay, Jared. Uh, Carl from Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, while I am enjoying Forza Horizon 4 quite a bit, one of the things that sucks is the lack of Mitsubishi and, more importantly, Toyota. I was initially going to square this off as a case of Company X not offering enough money to Company Y, but I've since learned that in the case of Toyota, this is not a Forza-only thing. Apparently, this is also the case basically every single racing game out right now, except for Gran Turismo Sport, which, based on the dev cycle for Gran Turismo, I suspect was licensed before Toyota stopped licensing their cars to games. I think so, that's true, yeah. So what is up here? Do Toyota want some weird Porsche mystique? Do they not want people who play racing games to buy their cars? Some marketing thing that I am missing? But it's not like completely devoid of Toyota, so... Is it's, it? There's a. Yeah. I know there's at least one. I think they've truck cut, in there. I think they've cut way, way, way back. Okay, uh, is, is typically how it goes. They want more money. Oh, I, is I think it's. Is, is, I want to say that that when this got out, it was like confirmed that Toyota was like, no, we we think our brand is worth more than what we're getting. Wow. I don't know about that. I mean, think about it in an environment where Microsoft got out there and made such a huge deal about the Porsche stuff when they got it. And then also had to say like, oh, we have to sell this as DLC because it's such a premium brand. Yeah, I like guess if you were another car brand, you'd be like, fuck them. Yeah, but Toyota's not on that level. Like for like a like a tuner mm, style I, racing I guess, game, yeah, I, I, I guess. Like the the not having Toyotas is a way oh, I agree. graver problem. I agree, it's a huge than, problem than Porsche. Like whatever. I, I agree that it is a huge problem there. It's a huge oversight. But like Toyota makes like affordable cars. You know, it's not like some weird. Yeah. Affordable like it, cars that I slam to the ground, <laughs> fill full of subwoofers, and put anime ladies on the side. Like all, all I mean is, it's a, it's a, it's a, a make you will see driving around town every time you go out, right? As yeah. opposed to something that you would only see in like a showroom or on a racetrack or mm -hmm. something. But so like that's it, that's the allure of a game like Forza. Is part of it is like tuning up everyday cars. Yeah, okay, sure. Like the yes. some people are definitely into like the whole track toy thing and all yeah. the who's supercar and that's that's neat. Yeah, but I think the appeal of something like Gran Turismo. Even back in the day, all like going all the way back, what Gran Turismo has always been has been, hey, we're going to take these cars and and tune them up and right. do cool shit to them. And also, I mean, they have uh, Supra and stuff like that that yeah. is in that wheelhouse for sure. Right. I, I guess yeah. all, all I'm saying is if they were to put out like, here's the Porsche DLC and here's the Toyota DLC, yeah, that, like, would that, suck. that would look that weird. That would be a bad like, that would not, solution. If that's what they're looking for, that's crazy. But And they've worked out whatever the stuff with Porsche where that stuff's just in the game. Okay. Um, because EA had the exclusive on it for a while. They had the exclusive deal with Porsche right. for those cars. Right. And so Microsoft, I want to say, probably had to even go maybe pay EA at one point. 
It was like a sub-licensing thing or something. But yeah. I don't remember. Uh, Dave from Georgia. It's interesting to me to hear all this commentary around Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Redemption 1. So often I hear Red Dead Redemption called Red Dead 1 or the first Red Dead when there was in fact a game before it called Red Dead Revolver. Yeah. Why does it seem like everyone has forgotten Red Dead Revolver? Because it was forgettable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, Capcom published it. It was a weird... Yeah, I mean... Does that have any connection to the Rockstar game at all other I than... I have no idea. Cowboys? Same developer, you know. Oh, was it? Like, it's Angel... It was Angel Studios oh, at that wow. point, I, I think. But, but... Huh. Uh, then he asked, do any other game series have a similar forgotten game? Soul Edge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, did that come out on the PlayStation yeah, though? Yep. So, like, but yeah. like Soul Calibur. Oh well, yeah, the game, totally. You know, totally. the brand name. Yeah, it's the yeah, game yes. people remember. Yeah. Soul Calibur Two came out, even though it was technically Soul Edge Three. Right. You know. Yeah. It's pretty. Sure. I'll buy that. I'm still kind of sad they called it Red Dead Redemption Two. I feel like Red Dead Blank would have been like a cool. Yeah. Just some other word yeah, and yeah. yeah, not use numbers. Red Dead Revengeance. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Adam see if Platinum made a Red Dead. <laughs> okay, oh. go on. Maybe I would. Wild West Nano Machines. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam from Denver. Do you guys put butter on Pop Tarts? No. no. What the fuck? I know. That's. I mean, that's the email. I don't know. That's weird, right? I could, yeah. Or is it? I don't know. Uh, if you have a plain mm, no frosting uh, Pop Tart, I could see the appeal, but no. maybe. I, but like, what's I'm inside not that buying thing? Buying those. That no. Yeah. Do they even make those anymore? Yeah. Without the frosting? Yeah. Really? Huh. I mean, I put butter on pancakes, but I also put syrup on that. Mm hmm Okay. Because I was weirded out by the, the frosting. I'm not weirded out by it. I've eaten like butter. <laughs> you know those those like pastries but, with a little bit of fruit in the middle? You yeah. melt a pat of butter on those guys and it's not. But if, the like worst if thing. it was pancakes with like chocolate chips or like all, when you get into like the fancy like dessert pancakes. Uh, I would not put butter on any of those. Why? Really? Because I don't. That's not what I'm looking for at that point. Yeah. For me, the butter is more of a. It's there a to lubricant. provide moisture than yeah. anything. That's why I get a diet coke with my pancakes. Fair enough. Dump it on a pancake. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 not disgusted by the idea of buttering up a pop tart, but I'm buying a pop tart because it's covered in sugar already, and I don't want to put anything else on it. I just want to pop it in the toaster and eat it, or not pop it in the toaster and eat it. That's my same argument about the pancakes. Like, if you're just like, here's some caramel dulce de leche pancakes, like, I would not put butter on those. Oh, sure, those. But I'm anything that comes with stuff slathered on it, I'm not going to. Yeah. But can we all agree there. that Pop Tarts are really dry? Yeah. Yes. And maybe they really? could use something. You think? Uh, yeah. I feel like. I mean, the out, like, your first couple bites are going to be dry, but once you're into that middle part, yeah, I yeah feel then like it's, it's a lot better. Especially but... if you heat it up, it, it all kind of but... softens. Yeah, but getting no, to the the meat. Of do them. you heat? Do you guys heat them up? Yeah, I have to eating eating them uncooked like that dryness you're talking about. I feel like is magnified like tenfold. Yeah, yeah, yeah they stick around in your mouth yeah. an awfully long time. I want it to be able to. Soft. I usually just like pop off. If I'm gonna eat them cold, which I do sometimes, I pop off the four corners. You pop off, throw them away. Pop tart. Mm. Yeah. I would get them from a warm vending machine at my old high school. Warm, warm, yeah. warm vending machine? Wow. Well, no, just because it was in view of the sun. Oh, okay. So everything in there was already warm. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Gummy bears are all melted together. Yum. Uh, it's big bear. It's called a super bear. Yeah. Email from Jason. Hi. While discussing Valkyria Chronicles 4, the subject of grenadiers came up, which then led to an offhand mention of grenadine and cherry juice. I only cherry recently discovered juice. this myself, but grenadine is not cherry juice. It's, it's pom pomegranate. It's pomegranate flavored syrup. In fact, the French word for pomegranate, my French is terrible, is grenad. Is that how to pronounce it? Grenade? Yeah, sure. I don't know. But and the thrown explosives get their name due to their resemblance to the fruit. I swear I've seen like cans of grenadine with actual cherries in them. Maybe those mm. are pomegranate. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, or I, just, I thought this was interesting because huh. grenades are named after fruit. I like grenadine. Don't like pomegranate. Also, aren't there American grenades called pineapples colloquially? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Weird. Explosives. Well, those are like th those little like nubbed ones yeah. that kind of resemble a pineapple. Sure. Delicious. Explosives and fruit. It's a great combination. Also, uh, pomegranates explode with flavor. That's right. Hmm. Fruit, a fruit explosion. Um, Ronnie from San Francisco. I bought Ronnie. Assassin's Creed. 
I, I assume he means Origins. That's what he wrote. I bought Assassin's Creed Origins last week. As soon as I booted it up, there was a mission where I had to stealth kill a dude, and I found myself yelling Re Requiescat in Pache like an idiot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done this since Assassin's Creed 2 and have played all 10 of them. Do you have any quirks uh, in series you have played for a while, or am I an insane person? I always yell, ha! When I stealth kill someone. Yeah? Yeah. That's not in the big book of stealth. I don't know where you picked that up. But mm. that's, that's a dangerous but way it to... it feels good, though. Yeah, I can see that. I always uh, write GG noob mid whenever I lose a Dota. Mm. Um, no, I don't do that. Actually, you know what? Like playing a few matches of Starcraft this weekend reminded me that anybody who acts super polite at the beginning of the match, like you can fucking guarantee is going to cheese you. <laughs> anybody that's like good luck good luck when you start or whatever it's like oh that's a friendly person and then like no 90 seconds later here comes the cannon rush like, I, uh, fucking asshole i did catch myself i've been playing a little bit of netrunner online and i did catch myself saying more i am more likely to say good luck have fun if i have like a really good starting hand yeah totally totally <laughs> like it's exactly that like this i you think i would have learned no um, tells never communicate <laughs> with other players yeah uh Email from Andy. Bars and tone. If you could only keep one, would you keep bars or tone? Please provide supporting arguments. They're synonymous. You can't you have can't, one without the other. Yeah. But what if? You can't. I, can't. I choose neither. Oh, rip the very how fabric gonna, of our being. How are you going to calibrate your whatever you're calibrating? Well, I'm already going to exactly. not be able to calibrate one exactly, of the two. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's a I, dangerous I question. Death. I choose Yeah, no. That's, <laughs> I'd choose the tone. Yeah, yeah, I do really? like I do like yeah. the tone. Yeah, mm. I need it. I can replicate the bars. I feel like the uh, the tone. Yeah, like the bars. I can replicate. The I can tone. replicate the tone without the bars. I can't do the tone perfectly. Mm. The bars are so iconic, though. It's different mm. variations of the bars, but there's no. Yeah, there's tons of test patterns. Yeah, there's only one tone. Yeah. Are you sure? Only one tone. No two tone. That's just Tony's. It doesn't count. There are multiple tones. There's one tone. Tone Loke. Tone mm -hmm. Loke. Yeah. Tony, Tony, Tony. Mm. Damn it. Tony yeah. the Tiger. No. Yes. He's a... Just, he's got he's got he's bars not, and tone. He's not tone. Like they He's got bars him. on him, uh -huh. and his name is Tone. Okay. He actively yeah. gets pissed if you call him Tone. <laughs> like, he's not you, Tone. You don't want to make that guy mad. Yeah. That's not great. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> ah! <sighs> All right. Email from the only way he knows how to express himself. It's really <laughs> fucking sad. Yeah. Uh, Tony, not everything has to be great or not great. Tony, some things can be in the middle. Some things can just be okay. If you were to take my life, that would be great. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's an email from Rolf. Last week, you were talking about games press trips <clears throat> and how they've changed over the years. In my last job, I wrote about tech and video games for a Dutch newspaper, and in the 12 years I did that, I've been on quite a few extravagant trips. I always, I pulled this email because, like, you always heard the European trips were way yeah. crazier yeah. than like, anything we did over here. That stuff always sounded like just straight damn up. Damn near scandalous. Like, like a bacchanalian. Amongst other trips, I was present at the infamous God of War 2 event in Athens that involved... Could just going to talk about that one, that actually. In, that involved a dead goat and yep. had topless body-painted ladies serving drinks... And yes, even back then, that made me pretty uncomfortable. Still, one of the weirdest ones was a trip to Bucharest, Romania for Criterion's Black. Huh. We were led to a big building in the middle of the city where we were handed some pretty heavy guns, and after a very short lesson in gun safety, we're told to have fun. What? Turned out the guns were loaded with blanks, but it was still fun. Still. It was still fun to fire MP5s, AK-47s, and M16s. Weirdly enough, outside the building, you could clearly hear the gunshots, but none of the passers-by even batted an eye at it. <laughs> yeah, that's Shit. the gun house. Yeah. Um, They're at it again. Those kids. Fun detail of that trip. EA had some Hollywood stuntmen there as well to show some moves during the event. And hanging out with them in the hotel bar at night was great fun. I learned how to fake kick a guy in the balls convincingly. And they did some fun card magic tricks that involved putting the card you chose on the ceiling of the hotel lobby. The next morning while checking out, I looked up and found the ceiling was covered with playing cards <laughs> with a poor hotel employee on a much too short ladder trying to get them off. <laughs> so to end this email with a question, what was the weirdest press trip you've ever been on? Nothing nothing like, uh, nothing like either, either of those. Yeah. 
Um, Nothing that crazy like the Cabo thing I mentioned last week, but that was basically just sitting at a hotel for three days right? to see three games. Yeah, I didn't go, you know, be working reviews. Like that was your department was to go do all that stuff. So yeah. I, I didn't necessarily go on a, a ton, but... Yeah. Yeah. Well, once we got over here, we were doing a little more of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, like definitely. Of, the Call of Duty ones were a little bit The weird. Call of Duty ones were weird. The, you know, like, hey, get on this helicopter. Like, that That was, the, I think it was Black Ops 1 that they drove everybody to, <laughs> they drove everybody from the airport to uh, another airport where they had a hangar set up. And inside the hangar, they had recreated the chair from the title screen of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just sat there and watched it. And they had ladies dressed up as, like, nurses or whatever it was technicians would kind of come in and out and just move things around near the chair and walk out again. Huh. And they had some other ladies that were there standing near some food and the ladies were just like, yeah, I don't know. They, they brought us in from a service and, you know, we're, just, we're hanging out. <laughs> and it took forever because they were, they were flying everyone by helicopter to where the event was from this hangar. And that takes time. And they didn't want to tell everybody what was going on. So it was just, you're just hanging out in this hangar with like a little bit of food and some women who had been hired by a service who didn't really know anything more than you did and it's like standing around going this is taking a really long time this is really weird and then then come to find out like oh okay get on this helicopter and then fly over they, they ended up writing a newspaper or like the local uh the, there was a, an article in the local newspaper about like helicopters flying over the city like what the fuck's going on you know and, and kind of saying ah no no like people thought it was Obama I guess uh, at one point huh. um, <laughs> weird we can go ask him. Yeah. Right. He's right down um, the yeah. And yeah, I don't know. So that was like a weird, goofy thing. Yeah. I remember they, they wanted the rides over to the airplane hangar. Like, so people like envision these things as like these big grand experiences. And it's gonna be like every minute of it's gonna be like immersed and look at this chair. Uh, and like the guy driving the black SUVs to drive everybody from one airport to the other, he had like a CD that was just like, Call of Duty, it was like Call of Duty, like it was supposed to play the CD with some intense music on it, and it was just sitting on the dash, like he never put it in. I was just like, yeah, no, like no one's that into it. <laughs> At the end of the day, yeah. it just like this is like fun in a weird way, but also like it doesn't need to happen. Yeah, uh, yeah like I went to a Bethesda showcase in Vegas. They had us doing Dune buggy stuff for couple hours in the afternoon yeah like the, right before rage came out but like that's not a dead goat i went to the, the, the there was an ea event in vegas where they were showing uh kingdoms of amalur reckoning uh and also whatever the need for speed game was at that point and there was some event they did where they took everybody out to the track and let them sit passenger seat in some mm-hmm. fancy car and i just didn't go to that i was like no i'm, I'm here to see these games and yeah. whatever uh, i want to say that's where they showed syndicate off for the first time mm-hmm. too might have been might have been it might have been a different event i don't know but uh, uh this one isn't uh, game related per se but we tried to tie it into <laughs> some sort of uh, gaming event um there was a there was a place in in minnesota that uh contacted game informer they mm-hmm. run this like a uh, uh, big like field testing facility where you can drive a tank okay over cars and shit yeah. and just like over okay. like, all this, this obstacle course and shit like that and it was my, it was my first day at Game Informer, and they're like, "Hey, we need you to go out on the shoot tomorrow." And it's like, "Okay, this sounds great." <laughs> Is it going to be like this all the time? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah, seriously. Yeah. So my second day at Game Informer, yeah, we got a camera together and a couple other guys, and I sat on top of a tank, moving tank, you know, with this extremely expensive camera, <laughs> you know, that I had never used before. It was that was. Uh, pretty ridiculous and then like up over a car and shit it was it was fun it was fun but uh that sounds all right there we, was some, we cut it to like some battlefield music or sure. something yeah it's like there showed like Tim Terry shooting guns <laughs> and shit you know there was a time when like people were a lot more open with just like putting us into dangerous situations like when sony put us into a destruction derby uh for twisted metal 4 oh wow uh, they drove everybody out on on a bus to some place where you could, you know, rent demolition derby cars. And, nice. and they were trying to be like, oh, don't try to wreck the cars so we can use them again. I'm like, fuck that. Yep. Wrecking these fucking cars. Um, and that was pretty ridiculous. There was one, I, I wasn't at it, but it was for a boxing game and they had a fucking boxing tournament. Oh, wow. And had like Ryan McDonald dislocated his shoulder. Like a, boxing Ray Holy Padilla. shit. Wow. 
Like just, f- <laughs> just like fucking what? Like what are we doing? Could like anyone get in the ring and yeah, do it out? I think anyone who was at the event, they were Holy like, if you, if you want to do it, we're gonna let you yeah. box each other in a tournament. Okay, oh, that sounds like, fun. Fucking what? I would love that. Um, and if I remember correctly, Ryan dislocated his shoulder at that thing, and then because it was a work-related injury, but an extreme case work-related injury, <laughs> the health coverage wouldn't cut. He got he got fucked over on that. Man. Yeah. Wow, that sucks. Uh, don't forget, but uh, at that uh, DOA event, um, they, they had Pocky. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Straight yeah. from Japan. Right. Pocky. Wow, yeah. My greatest <clears throat> and craziest press event thing was I went to a hotel that's like 15 minutes away and played arms Fuck. and ate um, sliders. Fuck. Yep. Wow. Just, just wait until you check out the chicken on a stick. <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just don't do a lot of that stuff anymore. No. Mm-mm. Well, I think they are starting to again, but it's yeah. not targeted. It's targeted at like YouTubers, yeah. like like people that yeah. will film. Because like like I said, I, I got invited. Like Microsoft invited us to like someone at Microsoft. Like like, like said like, hey, do you want to come down and film celebrities playing Forza Horizon? Yeah, you could have hung out with Tay Diggs. And or was it? No, it was not Tay Diggs. No, Sorry. it wasn't Tay Diggs. Uh, I forget who was on the list, but then afterwards they had photos. It was just like, and we, you know, because of the weather thing, we had it rain on them while they were playing it and shot mud in their face. It was really chocolate. And I was just like, I, what? Like what? All right. <laughs> it reminded game. me of the Ballers B-roll on the yep. latest game tapes of <laughs> just Tom Arnold going, Ah, these games, they're crazy. These right? guys love sure them. do love them. Yeah, we're hanging out on the top of a parking garage. This was, an, I don't think this was an E3 party. It was. I went down to LA specifically to go to some Sony party that was for a, it was maybe the launch of the PS2. I'm trying to remember what the actual like reason for it was, but Sony used to have these like, they're like celebrity parties Mm -hmm. and we would typically not get invited to them because we were like enthusiast press. And this was more like, Hey, variety, come take pictures of these people at this thing. Tom Arnold checking out the PlayStation. Yeah. 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 Well, no, (laughs) it it was, uh, it was, uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Oh, okay. Uh, dancing a lot on the roof of a parking garage around no one else. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to say Trey Parker was wearing like an American flag outfit, top Excellent. to bottom. Excellent. Anyway, yeah, there's a lot of really weird, yeah. dumb shit like that. Yeah, I've heard some, heard some stories about like rock star events from like, you know, some of the, uh, the alumni. Game I almost fucking flew out of the back of a Jeep in the desert in Vegas uh, on a smuggler's run trip oh, God. Uh, because it was the idea was like they were had people in, they had some ATVs and some Jeeps and everyone, like everyone broke up into teams. And they were going to ask trivia questions. And so we drove from point to point mm-hmm. and then they would ask us trivia questions and then you would win or lose uh, bags of fake cocaine. And whoever had the most at the end, <laughs> sure, um, you traded in for the super cookie, yeah, or, yeah, or some, whatever it was. And like on the ATVs, it was fine. I, I can ride an ATV, no problem. But mm. like in the back seat of that fucking Jeep, someone hauling ass yeah. over like uneven it, terrain. It I'm out. like basically doing fucking Superman's on the roll bar Jesus. as this thing's going <laughs> up and down. Like I'm just, it, it was it's rad, unfucking safe, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> Do you have a helmet on at least? Um, I don't think I don't know that we had helmets on in the back of the Jeep on the ATV. Oh, God. The ATVs had helmets. Okay. And it was just like they just went and contracted some Las Vegas touring group and yeah. built a custom event around it and went out and do it. It was a good rock star event in Phoenix at a laser tag arena. Because laser tag's fun. Not work re- or not video game related, but a couple jobs ago we had a team bonding exercise where we were gonna take a little boat around the bay here. Mm-hmm. Um uh, and at one point it got so choppy that it was like a not small sailboat, but you know, there was maybe 15 people on it total. So not like a huge boat, but at one point we were literally sideways. People were downstairs standing on the wall. What? Oh, um, I was up on the deck with others literally holding on for dear life. Yeah. And when we had started to go sideways, I like put my foot out to like push it up against something and I, apparently I did it so hard and I was so drunk that I didn't realize it at the time. But as I was like walking home, I'm like, oh, my ankle's a little bit fucked up. And I had to just straight up sh- sprained it. Oh, and they're wow. like, oh, it's not a work event because it's a party. Right. Yeah. Huh. But like you said. Deal with it. Ryan. Yeah. Fucked on that. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, it was Tyrese, by the way, at the Forza okay. season yeah. simulator. All right. 
Uh, I had Tay Diggs on the brain because I was thinking about it later. Because I was thinking about the time he followed me on Twitter recently. Yeah. They shot Tyrese in the there somewhere. face with chocolate. And like, you know, they rained on him and, you know, just the different weather effects of Forza uh, laid out onto celebrities. He looked very happy to be there. Oh, yeah. To be fair. So, that, like, that's the thing about, like, the, you know, we watch the B-roll and you see Tom Arnold at the NBA Ballers event and all that other stuff. Like, that's still happening. It's just never, yeah. it's never the world that we always intersect with because they're trying to, they're they're paying these celebrities to be there so that they can then get paparazzi or whoever and then hopefully say like, oh, he was at the NBA Ballers event on TMZ or wherever. The yep. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, okay. Last two emails, both from Francisco in Azusa, California. Does that ring any bells? He gets no. two? He sent, he sent them separately. The, other, okay. the second one is very short and very important. Uh, here's the first one. Uh, I recently bought a used DS Lite to play my GBA games on, and it reminded me of a sort of shame I carry. Uh, the holiday season following the release of the DS, I was in a Walmart playing game demos while my mom shopped. I overheard two ladies talking about buying a Christmas gift for one of their sons. They noticed the new DSs and pondered them before one of them said, but he has so many Game Boy Advance games and his Game Boy broke. If you get him the new system, he won't be able to play his old games. The second lady agreed and they purchased a Game Boy to gift to the child. I knew the DS could play GBA games, but didn't say anything because I didn't want to be that guy who butted in with random advice. Also, I was fairly shy. Was I wrong to doom that boy to a GBA instead of the new system, or is butting in a worse sin? He, no, he's, he's fine. No yeah, way. He, he, no, 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 no. He probably should have butt in. But that kid's probably fine. Yeah. They returned it. He survived. After he explained to his okay. mother the that... Kid no. Yeah. No way. That like so? kid dealt with that Game Boy and never bought another <laughs> video game console again. You're probably derailed, right. I'm derailed just trying derailed to, the course of history. I'm just trying to make this guy feel good. Don't... Okay. Butting in is okay if you like hear something that's just like straight up wrong right it's just like oh i heard this thing can't do that and if you know it can do that it's helpful to say that yeah they and might want to like, know if they're like oh i can't decide between a ps4 and an xbox one and you're like well actually the ps4 is great because this thing yeah. it's like, that's unsolicited advice that's yeah, yeah. that's where you're crossing the yeah that's a, that's a good uh that's a good line i have completely like no i i would i would probably let them make the mistake because i feel like i was maybe edging getting a little too close to the other end of the spectrum on that stuff and at some point was like no nope, i'm just no nope, mm. not gonna engage anyone in lengthy conversations about video games at video game stores yeah it's, it's especially it weird because like, i just get mad if you're a kid and they're adults it's like a little weird to like pop in and be like oh i have advice i'm a child like it, there's yeah. a certain well, like for me it was like half the time it was a clerk trying to sell people garbage oh uh, yeah yeah and me being like hey this man here is trying to rip you off yeah <laughs> yeah it was specifically like the no the b movie game is yeah, not the no. most anticipated for holiday for release. me and so so like this was a lesson i guess i learned a long time ago now it was uh people trying to sell unofficial N64 controllers oh. to people by saying like, it's the same mold. Yeah. And it's being like, it is absolutely not. Uh, and being mad That's about gross. it and being like, uh, mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no, I can't ever, yeah. I can't ever, I don't ever want to get yeah. into that <clears throat> conversation. I, th I think I may have mentioned before when I worked at Electronics Boutique back in the day that some of certain employees at that store would spew just straight bullshit yep. about, about products yeah. to people with no remorse whatsoever. Like just make it up on the spot. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. Last email also from Francisco. Uh, saw this and thought of y'all since I just watched Jeff's Tony Hawk pro skater stream. Apple apparently fucked up the first version of the new skateboard emoji and Tony Hawk called them out. Did you guys see this? No. no. He sent, he sent a screenshot of the Instagram thing on Tony Hawk's account that says, this is the proposed Unicode 2018 skateboard emoji. Don't shoot the messenger. Update, I've been invited to help correct this. What's wrong with it? I don't know. You tell me. Kind of looks like a Band-Aid to me. I mean, it looks like a car. It does not <laughs> It does not look like an appropriate skateboard. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I mean, it's corny and generic in the way that most emojis are, but... It reads as a skateboard. Yeah, it I don't does. Know. It's... Uh, but really small? I don't know that it would. Like, I would see Band-Aid. 
Maybe. It does yeah, look like yeah, a band-aid. It really it's looks real. like a band-aid yeah, to me. Also, maybe small, it loses. Also, this whole thing about Tony Hawk was tweeted out by the chief emoji officer from <laughs> Emojipedia. <laughs> the CEO. Yes, the CEO of Emojipedia says, okay, okay, we are fixing it, and Tony Hawk is helping. So there you go. Did he, not, okay, did he put an emoji at the end? Uh, I feel like he's got to put an like emoji yes, in everything. He used, he used the throwing the horns emoji Good. at the end. Great. Uh, yeah. Also, he has a small bird, like maybe a chick, like I, a baby chicken in his username. I want to know yeah. what his most re, most used emoji are. It's the poop. You want some hot emoji stats? Just the poop. <laughs> but you know that page of like all your recent mm-hmm. top ones? I just bet his is like a collect. Like his. No, it's it's not it's like you'd think it is, but it's just poop, eggplant, the <clears throat> wet. No, it just drops. He, he can't be cliched. I mean, he has to be a man of the people, but also he's got to like He's got to have like the suitcase in there and some weird shit. It's, like it's the just it's the fucking ironic sadness got? of just like no, he's he's just like us. I just clicked through to this guy's personal website slash CV and it says some of my roles include chief emoji officer emojipedia, vice chair emoji subcommittee, creator world emoji day, host emoji rap. This guy's Whoa. This guy's we gotta, we I, gotta get this guy. We need, we need the yeah. emoji this rap. He's extremely into emojis. I need to know what the emoji rap is. Maybe we can hey find everybody, out. it's... Uh, my... It's WRAP, to be fair. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. That's, not, to, not to dash oh, your dreams. Way less interesting. Yeah. Although I'm sure if video. you go to YouTube and type emoji rap, there are plenty of responses. There are. What? The first one is 15 minutes long. Okay. All right. Just flowing. Yep, that's right. Emoji off the dome. Happy kid. face, sad face, <laughs> kind of sad rhymes. face. Yeah, really happy all face. Rhyme. Yeah, man. There's no words. It's just emojis, <laughs> just flashing images. It's the poker rap of emoji. There you go. <laughs> that is prestigious. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, that's I maybe that could bad. be on yours. It'd be creator, the poker rap of emoji. <laughs> Did you guys take emoji based questions on the after show? We'll talk. We could. We would absolutely talk about emoji if that's yeah. if the people had emoji related questions. Well, I mean, what if people oh, send people send in questions, questions as purely emojis in emoji? I mean, I love the classic concentration. The game show. So my Rebus <laughs> game is on point. <laughs> okay, uh, you're down to interpret. Yeah, people want to send that stuff in. Yeah, uh, hit us up on the Discord that we post in the live show. That's yeah. right. If that's you right. can't watch it live, we got a phone number. You can call it in. Check yeah. that out. How's that going? It's going great. How, how are if voicemails? Voicemails are great. If you're in a car late at night and maybe inebriated, A, don't drive. B, thank you for your calls. <laughs> yeah, if you need something to do while you're waiting for your Taco Bell order to be prepped and delivered, just give us a ring. Just sitting there in the drive through yeah. 707 exit flu. <laughs> Is that real? Yes. That's real. That's pretty good. <laughs> Was that intentional? No. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, uh, yeah, stay tuned for the live show coming up right after this if you are listening to us live. That's right. Uh, and if you're not, thanks for downloading the podcast. Tell your friends it's about podcasts. Yeah. Tell it's them what about podcast podcasts. about podcasts. Tell your friends to rate it. It's nested five podcast eggplant five emojis. That's right. Infinite loop of podcasts. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. This podcast was brought to you in part by Sonos Beam, the smart compact soundbar for your TV. Beam lets you play everything you love from music and radio to movies, TV, podcasts, and more, all with a rich sound that fills the room. It's simple to set up, and if you don't want to bother, Sonos will send someone out and do it for you. That's right. If you live in a major metropolitan area, they've got a service called Up and Running, which means they'll send out a Sonos expert delivery guy or lady. I don't know who it is. And they'll set up your system absolutely free. How about that? You just need to order from Sonos.com. That's S-O-N-O-S. 
and select Up and Running at checkout if you qualify. Thank you.